Hello? We need to talk. 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 Welcome back to Be the Talk, episode number 61. I'm your host, Mr. KOA, alongside... Top Boy. And alongside... Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are good. you? Good. Um, so, Kathleen is a longtime fan and friend and supporter of our podcast, and she's been telling me she wanted to be on the episode for a long, long time, and I basically gave her the, yeah, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you, and then just kept forgetting, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, <laughs> but, we're, we're in like a year later. Ima- yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, am I going to next year? I'm like, you know what? You're coming next week. And she's like, oh. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself, Kathleen, and we'll get into this real quick. Um, to put it short and sweet, I yeah. guess. Um, I mean, we have time, but you can show me. <laughs> no, um, it's I'm a complex woman with simple needs, hmm. just to put it nicely. Aren't like they that. all complex, though? I feel like it depends on the person, hmm. but that's my personal opinion of myself. So what makes you complex? just based on my viewpoints i i'm a very curious person so mm. and i've i've always been that way even as a child okay so in terms of how i like to form opinions i like to do research on it whether it's talking about it or reading about it or just going around asking people what their opinions on it just yeah. to get different perspectives right and to be able to formulate my own opinion not just by listening to others so that's something that i take pride in just as for my so person. you think before you speak yeah i don't <laughs> i don't ever speak on things i don't actually know about because that's amazing that's yeah. that's it's rare know, by the way i feel like <laughs> it, i'm i'm not gonna look like a fool in front of anyone mm. especially in front of myself right so and that's not something that i'm willing to do do you feel like ever. you're a very self-aware person then um i try to be I try to be. That's not something that I would say I am confidently. Right. Just because of the fact that there's always so many things about yourself that you haven't learned yet. So for for the things that I do know mm-hmm. about myself, I would say I'm self-aware. I feel like oftentimes people with personalities like that tend to overthink as well. Do you I think agree. that's something you also yeah, do? Yeah, definitely. That's something that I can admit confidently right yeah no that's that's um that's a trait that i've learned to embrace just because of the fact that i've tried very hard not to do it Mm -hmm. and i've failed multiple times so you just learn how to manage it i guess in a sense of you need to to learn how to look at things emotionally and logically and then find the reason in between and then do it situationally right on a case-to-case basis and then you just do it that way at least that's how i do it Mm -hmm. so have you listened to every episode of our podcast? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All 60? Yeah. Before the 61? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really dope. Yeah. What, what, I guess, what got you into the podcast in the first place? How did you find it? And what has kept you still listening? Because um, we've missed a lot of weeks. We've been, different things happened. Mm-hmm. Relationships, breakups, moves, sicknesses, deaths. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of different things that happened to yeah. uh, make the podcast fluctuate sometimes. Mm-hmm. But what has kept you... I guess, going with us? Well, when I first discovered you guys, it was through Twitter. Mm. Um, I love Twitter. It's I think it's like the most used social media app that I have. Mm-hmm. Probably one of my favorite apps. Probably yeah. my favorite app, I would say. I can, I think like I go on Twitter every day, mm. but there are like Instagram, for example, it's it's only like when I want to. Right. But Twitter, I, I like to go on every day just because you can access everything from there. Right. Um, and I listen to Extra Gravy. And Marley. there was there was yeah. this yeah there was this um the episode that you guys were there mm-hmm. and um I didn't realize that you guys had your own podcast too so when um when I listened to that episode I went to go find out your episode and then um it was a funny story based on you mm-hmm. because there was Cozy Caravana in oh, right. 2017 yeah. okay and um I was there with my friends and I was recording it Sorry? When I was filming it? No, this was the year before. Before that? Okay, yeah. Okay. And we were um we were in line mm. and then all of a sudden, like in the back of my head, right? I get elbowed in the back of my head <laughs> while I'm in line. And I, I look oh. and, it, oh. and it's Ryan. Oh, right. And he's like, he's like, yo, and then like his 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 elbow like went to the back I of do my head. That. Right? And I am like, who the f- is this yeah. guy, right? Wow. And then and then my friend is like Oh, that's Ryan, and I'm like, who the hell is Ryan? She's like, yeah. he's a YouTuber. I I'm like, I'm like, I don't, 
I don't watch yeah, YouTube like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then when I saw who the people were in that in that episode with with extra gravy, I'm like, it's this guy. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, let me let me see what his mindset is like. I mm-hmm. I, I, I deserve that much from right. someone who elbowed me back. <laughs> head. So um, and then ever since I started listening to it, it was um, I couldn't stop. Mm. So you guys have this charm. Which is why um, I was just explaining to to Jamie. Yeah. Actually, she asked me um, how I started listening to you guys. Yeah. And there was this one episode, like around Christmas, where like this past Christmas. Or no, the, first the one Christmas? the one before okay, that. Okay. Um, or I guess this, yeah. Two thousand seventeen yeah. Christmas. Right. Yeah. And then um, I was having like a weird week, and then I listened to an episode that you guys had. And it was, it like, it made me laugh throughout the whole time. Yeah. And it was just, it brightened my day. And that's when I emailed you guys. Yeah. Right. That email. And then from then, I was just, I knew that I was going to be, like, a like a fan for life. I wonder what, I'm trying to remember what episode that might have been. Oh, no, I was binge, wa- like, I was binge listening. Oh, just, yeah. oh yeah. 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 Play. I think it was, um, it was the debate, like, that you guys, you guys had uh, an episode, it was, like, the great debate or something. Uh, I was just talking about. It was just the both of you. It was, it yeah. was like a short. It was just me and you going yeah. at it. And you guys were just fighting <laughs> we're, the we're whole going, time. Remember, we <laughs> disagreed on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember. That. I, remember that. I remember. I know what you're talking about. And it was very interesting. Like just, I was snapping on you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was yeah, going yeah. off of you. And you're, but I think and before, you're defending yourself. You're getting mad. Like, we're both getting mad. <laughs> but I think before yeah. that episode, we were just like, we're gonna have a debate. Like this episode, yeah. we're like, mm-hmm. this is gonna be the episode where we debate on something. Yeah. It was just yeah. so funny because, like I said, I was I was binge listening. Yeah. And um, I in the email that I wrote you, I was talking about the dynamic that you guys mm. have as, as 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 a friendship. Yeah. And um, when I listened to that episode, it was it was so funny just because of the fact that like I felt like I was in that room. Yeah. <laughs> just watching you guys or listening to you guys go at it, and it was hilarious. So. It, I do like though when Agreed people to disagree. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I do like when people listen. And <laughs> yeah. <they're> really, <laughs> listen I remember yeah. just I'm just like you don't fucking forget it. Like yeah. we just we both just said forget. There was no actual solution. I remember we were mad about. Yeah, I, I honestly we were, can tell you. We we're getting heated. Like, I have to go back and listen to that episode. It's just our personality. I think mm-hmm. that's it was our personality types. Yeah, I, I I I vaguely remember it, but it's a big reason why I always say I enjoy doing this mm-hmm. and why I wanted to bring him on in the first place is because, like. For my YouTube stuff, like I people like me for mm-hmm. for my personality, my perspectives on things, but it's it's one it's perspective, yeah. right? And it's a and strong it's, one, and it's a strong, it's a strong one. one. And yeah. if it's not something you're trying mm-hmm. to hear all the time, mm-hmm. which is I understand, I, sometimes people want the like mm-hmm. softer approach, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. you know, more emotional side, more empathetic side. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you need that to be mm-hmm. honest, and I don't necessarily have that with <laughs> with how I deal yeah. with things. It's a balance, right? It's and balance. I think that's that's why you know. Yeah. We enjoy doing this because it's not like we we have our disagreements on certain things, but mm-hmm. it's not from a malicious place or like yeah. a disrespectful yeah. place. For it's sure. just like it's friends. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what it is, and it's like you like I said, you guys have that certain charm, mm. and I feel like what that is is that coming from an audience perspective, you make it feel like you're actually just talking to your friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, as a person who's listening, I feel like I'm your friend, right. even though I don't necessarily know you directly. Right, right, yeah. At least that's how it was in the beginning. Yeah. And so it w- it was just, it felt very vulnerable and very raw. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, a quality that I enjoyed most about it. So when people ask me about the podcast, I tell them it's the most raw podcast I've ever, <laughs> yeah. I've ever heard. So you Thank you. No condoms over here. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, have, I have one more question. Yeah. Um, the live shows. Mm. What have you thought about them? I felt like it was. You very, went to both. We yes. had, yeah, I was there for both. Um, the first one, I felt like it was very surreal for everyone, for both you guys and and yeah. the supporting system. Um, the second one was weird. Like you, you called it out in a sense of like how there wasn't as much support, and I was very surprised. Yeah. Just because of how strong the first one went. Mm-hmm. But essentially, I felt like the second one was better. I agree. Because of it the was fact tighter. That, yeah. yeah, it was tighter. And you, you knew polished. what you were doing. Yeah. yeah. Just because, like, um, the first one, it was an experience yeah. for everyone. And we were just, um, as a whole, we were trying to figure it out if this was something that you could do for the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And obviously, it was. So, and then the second one, it was just great as, yeah. as a whole. And But there was this one person, 
I think I know audience. exactly who you're talking about. The girl at the front. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know if she's listening now, but if you are, <laughs> listen. Yeah. Just learn to compose yourself because <laughs> I did not want to go there and listen to you talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, I try to I try to regulate that stuff as much. No, as I know possible you did. I know you did because you know I've I've been at certain you know podcasts or other mm-hmm. events like that, and mm-hmm. once you let the crowd take over yeah. the event, it really ruins it for everybody. Yeah, definitely. You know, like you people are gonna have, they're gonna have their outbursts and say what mm-hmm. they have to say and like talk at the turn or whatever, mm-hmm. which is fine. That's, that's the whole experience, but. It's not a me and you combo yeah. thing. Like yeah. other people were here. I she can't... was. She was a friend, though, right? She was a friend of yeah. someone that li- that listened to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like... I didn't I didn't even know her until mm-hmm. like, I never met her yeah. until that day. But yeah, she was kind of wilding for a bit. A bit. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Thank yeah, you no, definitely. It's in, it's insightful. I next mean, like, one, right? Uh, next, next the one. next one is hopefully April. 5th. Fifth. That's the tenth of the day. I keep talking. Yeah. I'm gonna finalize it. I swear finalize that was, it with him. Was that not the same date as it was last year? No, actually, it was. Is it the same week? It was right? April though. Yeah. It's the same good, week. You have a good memory. Thank you. It was. I have it up here. It's Part like, of my in, complexity. It's in the highlights. April sixth. Yeah. April sixth. See. You're good. See. Yeah. April sixth was there the first one. Yeah. So April fifth mm-hmm. of this year um, will most likely be. This one's which is a Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I am so, for. The chances are the same. I didn't even realize it was April's like that yeah. close. Mm-hmm. It's very odd. Huh. Okay. Are you yeah. guys still planning on doing that barbecue? Thing? Yes. Hopefully, definitely. Yeah. I definitely want to do it. Like the thing is, I summer just sprinted last year. Yeah, I don't yes. know. Yeah. In terms of location, I don't know where yet because even my backyard would work. In all honesty, because people just don't. Right, like just random stuff. stuff there, but we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah. I would love to do a barbecue type thing, mm-hmm. yeah. um, so that'll be interesting. But uh, we didn't we didn't put out an episode last week, but a lot of things did happen in the last week. Um, we talked about uh, Jussie Smollett on like the last episode. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. have seen the updates. Mm-mm. Are you aware of what's happened, Ryan? Haven't followed. So he's been. Charged on oh, have 16 counts or something, yeah. 16, something like that. 16 felony yeah, charges, 16 that. felony charges, which means he could literally spend 64 years in jail. So his whole but, life, like if they hold, basically, yeah, but they're not gonna hold. No, I don't know, they're not gonna hold. You never hold. I don't they're, know. You don't they're think not, so? No, you don't think they're gonna make an example of him? <sighs> no, because, like, I mean, they could make an example of him, but I, I don't think they will mm-hmm. because. It's it's like it's like anything else. Like I feel like if he was a regular person, they might. Mm. But because he's because once you have fame and like a name attached to you, no matter how bad and fucked up shit you do, hmm. there's they always let you weasel out of it. Yeah. And money just money makes things happen. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not he's not a millionaire. He might be close to it, but yeah, he's not broke. You know what I mean? And if he has the right lawyers and the right people around him, like they'll spin this somehow. I mean, mm-hmm. they're gonna they're making an example out of him. By making it news, yeah. yeah, but they're not. But in terms of what actually happens to you, like, yeah, we, we're charging with this, we're doing this, it's going to court. Like, they're gonna talk about it to give the hype and the image of yeah. restitution and like something happening. But if like to literally see him like a TV mm-hmm. star go to jail for that long, like they never do. They never do. Mm. Regular people do, which is sad because yeah. the people who can't afford it have to deal with shit, and the people that can afford these stuff never really do yeah i mean yeah like i don't i don't really see him you really see him going to jail for that long like i don't see him going to jail for that long i see him probably being in jail under or under some type of probation something like that definitely probation but i mean look even if he doesn't go to jail he's effectively like ruined oh it's great yeah because he deads himself he's pretty much like blacklisted right. from you know the community and his job in general so I don't know. That's and I it. feel like they'll probably be like, that's enough. <laughs> I Is feel he, like... But. Sorry, didn't he try to justify it by saying that he had a drug problem? I don't know. Like, there was he, a he lot... He that ruse? Yeah, there, yeah. Was, there, there was... Did you say ruse? He went that route. Oh, yeah, sorry. And, and then someone said he was the wrong skin color. <laughs> yeah, like, it wasn't going to work. There were a lot of things I know that were just kind of messed up about that case. And then, ironically, R. Kelly, that whole situation mm-hmm. as well. I don't know that, who... Look... I was, I was never a uh, 
like I worked in PR. I wasn't like I didn't work in the career long enough to consider myself an expert, but there were things that I saw in that industry that kind of shaped me moving forward. Where I was like, okay, you really have to do think about a lot of things before you even speak sometimes, right? So I don't know who allowed R. Kelly to go on this talk, like this, inter- do this interview. <laughs> I really don't. Like, like who? Someone threw you in the fire. Like who? Like no, who? No who, author- who authorized this? That's no, what I want to know. This is okay. Mm-hmm. This is a good idea. Like, like someone went to R. Kelly, or or R. no, Kelly or went, no one went to R. R. Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly went to someone yeah. and said, "I'm doing this interview," and no one stopped him. Yeah. Mm. Like at that point, you have to physically stop him. Yeah. And say. No, yeah. and I'm not even saying this because I'm trying to defend R. Yeah. Kelly, look out for his best interest. It's just how does this benefit you? How? Does this how? Help you? how? The amount of memes and videos that have come, like Twitter, has just run rampant yeah. with his videos because th- there was no way he was going to survive this situation. Absolutely no way. And the thing is, it's not. It's not like any of these questions were surprises because they never are. Yeah. They rarely are. You knew where you're going into. You knew the questions. You know she's gonna ask you directly about these certain things, and whatever show he put on, yeah, like it just re- <laughs> it just reminded me of the same thing as Jesse Smollett's stupid thing, except it was after the fact rather than previous. Bro, because when he was getting up and like yelling during, you see that? It was, it, was like a, it was an act. I'm when, like, this is an act. When he was doing, like, all, no, that's the thing though. I don't think it was an act, which made it even crazier to me. You think like, he's genuinely crying? No, I, I genuinely think there's something so wrong with R. Kelly that everything we saw him doing there was was authentic. Was authentic. <laughs> like, <laughs> just he's that off. Like, I think he's he, that off. Personally, Psychologically. Yeah, like personally, I, I think, think he's he, off. Everything he was saying, yeah. I thought was probably a lie. Like, I think him trying to say, I never slept with these women, blah, mm. blah, blah. I think all of that was a lie. But I think the way that he was acting... Mm. Was was him. was him? Like I thought Just we saw. Irate. I thought in that <laughs> moment we saw the real R. Kelly. Right. Because I was looking at it and I'm like, yo, I've seen, I've seen men who have done some dirt mm. act the same way. Yeah. So I'm like, it's not all overcompensate. Overcompensate. <laughs> I'm like, it's not that far off. Like this guy is, he is who we thought he we, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was. You know. I was just dying when <laughs> one of the things he said sounded like he was singing. And I'm like, there's, there, because we're used to the R. Kelly voice, right? Yeah. Like the trap in the closet voice where you're like singing but talking. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know I mean? yeah. So, like, one of the things he was like talking to or kind of de- defending himself, I can't remember what he was saying, but it sounded like he was singing. So I, I couldn't take it seriously because I'm like, this is R. Kelly just singing a song. Yeah. Like, he's, he's defending himself through song. Man, like, look, this is it's crazy. crazy because I said, I said this when we were on Marlon's, uh, when I was at Marlon's live show, mm. how, to me, this is this is a real life Boondocks episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird because I was explaining this to my boy Peter the other day. I was like, I was like, yeah, this situation is a Boondocks episode, and, it, and I'm like, in fact, they actually did this in the episode, and he, he couldn't remember. Then he's like, yo, it was because he rewatched the episode, and literally, it's the same shit. Yeah. Like R. Kelly goes to trial. He sings a couple songs when he's at the trial, and everyone, everyone just forgets. Yeah. But Huey, Huey's like, "Yo, this man is sick." Yeah. Like he's calling him. Like, what he's, he's doing. He's like, he's like, he needs help. Like he's actually sick. Yeah, yeah. Like we can't condone this type of behavior, right? Meanwhile, you have uh, Riley on the flip side of it, who's like caping for R. Kelly, man, like, like standing for him, which is fat. Like. People do it. Yeah. People do that stuff. Even after the documentary, people were still in the club. He, he went to the clubs after. And people Bro, were still with him, singing. The thing that <laughs> Riley said that killed me, he was like, uh, he was like, look, if I see P coming at me, I move. Yeah. That girl saw P coming at her, she stayed. Right. Right? And I was like, yo. Like, <laughs> I was like, this man like build up a case to defend R. Kelly. Yeah. And you're just sitting there like, what? This is a real episode. Right. So I'm watching this all unfold, and I'm like, man, like, this is gonna go downhill at some point. But I'm gonna enjoy watching it while it goes down. <laughs> it's guys gonna watch it. Honestly, I, I I feel like the older I've gotten, it's it's this weird, it's this weird like experience that I'm so like even leaving the fact you're saying like you guys love Twitter, right? Like yeah. I used to be on Twitter a lot, especially when I was doing YouTube. Obviously, I was always yeah. on Twitter. 
talking with people back and forth, the fans, and talking mm-hmm. back and forth with, like, just friends or whatever. And just even just reading stuff. And Marlon's on Twitter all the time. So, yeah. like, I would just, like, back and forth with him all the time. But it's it's straight. Like, I'm speaking of getting older. Your, your birthday just passed. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're 27 now? 27. 27. Yeah. Um, yeah, as they get older, it's, like, I'm getting more and more, I guess, distant with, like, other people's lives. Mm. Like, I even... Mm. Even the like even the news, I'm guilty of that. Like I used to be so into just like that's what's happening with that, the news and like the more like fucked up shit that keeps happening in this world, mm. I it's like I'm blocking it out. Like yeah. not being ignorant to it because I know what's happening and I know like I know Trump's still doing his bullshit. I, yeah. I, I every now and then I check in to see like mm. how fucked up is it really, yeah. and then I pull back out because I'm like yeah. it. It breaks you down like mentally, mm-hmm. and it, it distracts you. Like whether you th- like whether you like it or not, just like seeing all this information. And then this person broke up with this person. This person did this. Mm-hmm. He's Tristan's cheating. This person like it's a lot of noise. And like I, I really yeah, and I love basketball. Like mm-hmm. I love basketball more than anyone could probably say. Yeah. And I don't even watch basketball games games anymore. Yeah. And not because I don't like basketball. Yeah. It's just like the, the where I put my time now is so like calculated yeah. to even sit and watch basketball games anymore unless I'm physically going to a game like yeah. I love going there yeah. but like I don't remember the last time I sat and like just watch an entire game I yeah. don't know and it's like my priorities are changing and like importance of things and negativity yeah. is just like completely like depleted from my life is that a conscious choice or I feel do, like it, do you feel like you you just noticed that? I feel like I'm yeah I feel like I've embodied it now I don't think I'm like don't watch the news. Like, I, mm. it's, it's not like that. It's just, yeah. like, weeks will go by, and I'm like, yo, like, I have even, like, I have no idea what's going on. Mm. Like, I have no, I just haven't, I've been so into what I'm doing. I've been traveling, working on this, shooting clients, meeting people, whatever. So then I'm like, two weeks or a month have gone by, and I have no idea what's happening in, like, the U.S. or Canadian economy. Yeah. Right? Are like, you okay I, with that? No. I mean, I'm, I don't want to be okay well, with that, but it's you, like... See, this is... When you first said that, I I kind of agreed with where you're coming from, right? Because I I agree with that. And thing that of, used to be that's what's even strange. Well, the thing is, look, I agree with the fact that I've I've distanced myself from uh, like people that I knew mm-hmm. in real life, um, just based just based on the nature of like how my life has gone, right? But from like I I love Twitter, like I love Twitter because. Of all the social media apps that there are out there, Twitter is probably the one where I would say it it genuinely brings me happiness. Right. Mm-hmm. In the sense where I know that if I go on Twitter, if I need a laugh, if I need yeah. to go on Twitter, find something. I will probably find something that I can laugh really hard about. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, to your point, a lot of it is noise, but it really depends on... It comes down to like who and what you follow, mm. yeah. which sounds kind of like dumb to say, but with Instagram, you know, you like it. It just feels like a lot of noise when mm. I'm going through Instagram. I think you're not getting anything. I'm not. Right? I'm not gaining yeah. anything. I'm just looking at. It feels like I'm just looking at a magazine, yeah. but I'm not really getting a lot of things. With Twitter, depending on who, yeah, depending on who you follow, it's very easy for it to just be a bunch of junk, right? Or it can. Be like very insightful. Yeah, you, right? you can follow a bunch of news yeah. news companies and so, just read their stuff. It's with true. that said, I don't, I don't remember the last time I went and you know, open up, watch my TV and like looked at the news or like watched a game or something like that. It's Twitter is really where I get all the information that I personally need. Care about. And then outside of that, I'll just go do my research, right? And and it's crazy because, um, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast recently, and he had uh, Jack Dorsey, the guy that created Twitter Mm -hmm. on the app. So he had him on, let's say, at the beginning of the month, beginning of February, and episode went well. A lot of people were giving Joe flack at the end of the episode because they felt like they didn't, he didn't grill Jack Dorsey hard enough. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because Jack Dorsey basically explained that, you know, he created this app with a bunch of people, and he had no clue basically how it would change the world. Right, and it did because Twitter and Facebook were largely responsible for why Trump won presidency, mm. not because they were trying to get him to win. No, it's just the impact of it. The impact, yeah. basically, uh, 
you know, all this mess that Trump is in the news for, right. it came Whether out. bad publicity is still but it, publicity. Yeah. it came out that uh, basically Russia did interfere with the American uh, political system, right, when the voting was all going on. But to the extent that what Russia was doing was basically people in the Russian government hired people to pretend to be people online to fuel arguments in the U.S. So they would... To say outrageous shit. So what they would do, like Russian people, some Russian people would pretend to be people who were part of Black Lives Matter Mm -hmm. and then say some like crazy reckless shit. And then you have people on the other side who would say some crazy reckless shit too. And this is... This is on their platforms, right? And that drives the narrative. So, you know, in true fashion, Jordan is like, okay, I'm going to have him on again. But I'm also going to have, like, a reporter who's, you know, kind of against Jack and grow him more. And it was interesting listening to it because, you know, he was basically saying what we were talking about in this conversation here. How a lot of it is noise and the problem is how do you, how do you police a lot of that stuff? Because you can, right? The problem is you you tell people you can't say these things online, but then are you taking away their freedom of speech? They're an American company, and in the States, freedom of speech is a big thing, but it's a global app. So you can't apply American laws to a global thing, right? Like, it just doesn't make sense. And, you know, it was really interesting because you're sitting there listening to this, and you're thinking, man, like, am I consuming this app and really gaining anything out of it? Or... Am I feeding into this noise? Or am I getting a lot of the noise? That's why really a lot of it comes down to, like, it comes down to the individual at the end of the day. I don't even go on Facebook anymore. Like, I barely do. And I feel like when I go on Facebook, I see the weirdest things. <laughs> like, I see... Yeah, it's, it's strange yeah. stuff. Yeah. I like, remember back in the day when you used to, you used to type statuses yeah. and stuff like that? <laughs> that anyway. Thinking about that now, that stuff is crazy. Yeah. Like... What am I writing a status for? But the thing, the thing is, Facebook at when Facebook was the thing, per se, it was every okay, every day. Every day I, that goes by, yeah. I'm realizing more and more that the older we get, the more distance we're getting from our friends and from yeah. our comfort zones. Yeah. And we have to remember when Facebook came, it was like prime high school time mm. where like everyone that was on Facebook were your high school friends yeah. mm. they were all your friends so like the stuff you're talking about is stuff you can talk about tomorrow mm-hmm. it's stuff that if I you see my stats last night like it's mm-hmm. it's constant it's, current. it's mm. current it's constant and like feedback is like tomorrow you talk about it and you say something today tomorrow and people are commenting about stuff from school like it was such a very concentrated mm-hmm. thing back then now Facebook has expanded because we've expanded. And social apps have expanded, but we've expanded to plans like, you're not going to Facebook for your opinions anymore like you used to because you don't care, to be honest. Like, I don't care about your opinions as much as I did when I was 17, 16 years old, right? Um, The stuff you're posting on Facebook, like, it used to be, you know, a lot of traveling stuff Mm -hmm. and, like, stuff you're doing. Instagram just became the thing, like... I'm not gonna do that on Facebook. I'm not gonna duplicate it. Like du- yeah. duplication is also another thing people don't like. Yeah. Like, yeah. At, as these apps coming, like mem- same thing. Like, how did Snapchat get? Snapchat's still doing okay, but a lot of Snapchat users went to Instagram once they made stories yeah. because of that duplication. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. am I gonna post a story in Snapchat and then Instagram? Yeah. And is, is it gonna be the same? Like, do I post? Mm-hmm. I just do I post on both platforms? Mm-hmm. I'm just choose one. Yeah. I was I did the same thing. I used to use Snapchat all the time. Mm-hmm. When people follow me at my day job, I was using Snapchat all the time, doing my making yeah. fuckery at work. Mm-hmm. And then I would put on Instagram when they had stories, and I'm just like, I'm not gonna post this twice. Like, mm-hmm. just consciously, I'm just like, I'm not gonna post the same thing. Like, mm-hmm. and I just chose Instagram because I'm like, I'm more on it. Mm-hmm. So the lack of duplication, you know, our friends are changing the economy. Like, Facebook is it, it? They own Instagram, yeah, because they realize that everyone's going over there. So they just said, let's just at least still make some money from both sides, mm-hmm. but. You know, even even uh, with a podcast, for example, like when we first started podcast, I was listening to podcasts like crazy, mm. but I was also in my day job. Yeah. So you're saying you listen to, to Joe Rogan podcast mm. and that just sparked their mind in me just now. I don't listen to this podcast. I haven't yeah. yet, but I want at when I was listening to podcasts, I wanted to listen to his podcast. and I yeah. kept saying I wanted to get into it. But I used to be like a die hard like Joe Budden Joe and Biden brilliant idiots. Like I told you, so, and the Bodega Boys. I used to be always listening to, but I was working yeah. my day job. Mm-hmm. So 
the time that I listened to the podcast yeah. was during work to drown out the actual work I hated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Now that I've left my job, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't know last time I listened to Billy Idiots. I actually yeah. don't. Yeah. And it's crazy because, like, I listen to them every single day and I yeah. don't know last time I listened to them. Yeah. I don't know what episode I missed of Joe Button. Like, I, if I had to listen now, I have to go back, like, 30 episodes. No yeah. joke. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, and almost two years have gone by. You know what I mean? And it's, it's not, it's not that I don't like their podcast. It's not that I, it's not that their podcast started mm-hmm. sucking. It's just my priorities and things and timing has changed. Like, I don't know, I don't know where I fit that. Yeah. Like, I still create ours. But I don't know where I fit that to listen to others. Yeah, Although I want but, to. Like, I really, I want to know what's well, going on because I love their convos. Well, that's I don't, the thing, dude. I don't know where I put I it. Listen, like, I listen to other people's podcasts yeah. when I'm, if I'm editing pictures. Like, for when I'm editing, mm-hmm. listen to music. I don't, and that's why see, I see, but that's the thing. Like, you're making a choice, yeah. though, to listen to music over that. Right. I listen to it if I'm, like, editing pictures or on the rare occasion if I have the time to play video games, right? right? But aside from that... Those are the only times I do. Sometimes if I'm driving, right? If I know I'm going to have a long drive, then I will. And it, even then, it's just, you know, it's just a matter of choice at that point. Um, what do you do for work? I work for Go Transit. Yeah. Yeah. I work as a station attendant. So um, it's fairly new, but the, the job opportunity is a permanent one. Right. So um, I'm going to have it for life. Nice. And then it's um, once you're in the company, it's extremely, extremely easy to go through the company, right. regardless of whatever position you want to go into. And um, fortunately for me, as a station attendant, it's pure customer service. Yeah. And I absolutely love that. Yeah. I know you don't hear a lot of people no, say not. that, but it's it's something that I really like to my core. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love conversation and I love helping people. Yeah. And just to be able to to give people insight in terms of they come to you because they need you. Are you on the right? actual trains? I'm sorry. You're... No, I'm I'm at the station. Oh, you're at the station. I'm okay. I'm at Union Station. Okay. And so um we're at the downtown core, so it's more or less like the um, it's the largest transportation hub in Toronto, mm-hmm. right? And so you you get to see every single character yeah. from yeah. there, man. And I I promise you, um there's there's the train part and then there's the bus part. Right. And the the clientele are very different. Are very very yeah, different. Yeah, I'm And um. The type of people that you get, it's um, it's very funny, mm. and then it's also it's um, it's very telling mm. because you get to you get to see the good part of customer service, yeah. and then you get to see the you know when people say you don't really know how stupid people can be until right. you work customer service. Yeah. I call, I call yeah. it customer stupid. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically. Like, I worked at Full Logram. It's like this is customer. This is mm-hmm. a t- type of stupid. Definitely. Customer what, stupid. What I learned honestly from working retail, customer service in general was. You know that saying, like, the customer is always right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's wrong. No, oh, it's what it no is, absolutely it, not. What it is is the customer is not always right. The customer is usually valid. Because... That's dependent on the situation. Yeah, because it's always dependent on the situation. Like, right. a customer will probably come in here and say some shit that's, like, wrong. Right. But they may be valid in saying that because, you know, someone else told mm-hmm. them right. that information. No, that, right, that's so, all that it is. They're misinformed, yeah, exactly. right? And a lot of the times, it's your job to give them the correct information. Yeah. And when you're in that position, it's very important for you to be understanding, yeah. but to be thorough. It's, it's it's something, it's it's very simple. Because when you take the time, the, I would say, five minutes max to inform a customer on how things work, right. it saves so much hassle yeah. and it prevents so many problems within the future yeah. because if you just if you just give it to them let them figure it out no one is a lot of people are not that smart right. mm-hmm. and so when they come back it's a whole new set of problems yeah. that could have just com- been completely avoided just by taking the time to say hey listen this is how it works mm-hmm. just so you know so that for future references you won't run into these kinds of problems but you understand that a large portion of you know sales is volume Right. Of course so it is. So I don't really think they care. Like, they, the whole reason. This is my theory. I don't really have facts behind it, but the whole reason I feel that there are roles for customer service mm. is because businesses are too lazy to explain their products. So they need that to be a role for all the the mishaps that are going to happen. Like we're aware that I, we don't have the time to explain everything, mm. so we need to have people allocated for the definite problems that are going to happen. Like, yeah. 
we know that this is limited to in terms of how much time we're going to put into describing this, explaining mm-hmm. this. And there's going to be a large number of people who have no idea what the fuck to do with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's hire people to answer these questions because they're going to come. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, at, but at, the, at the same time, though, I think um, just to play devil's advocate, like I, because I, I do agree with your point of view, but I also think that and I'm not saying that, it's solely the reason. Yeah, because I think there's a flip side to it where the customer, guest, whatever you want to call it, they there's like an in and in a ego that mm. every customer seems to have where mm. they think they know everything right or they they might not want to ask for help to begin with right so i'll never forget like when i used to work at apple and i used to deal with older customers like apple used to have this service called uh one to one where basically you would pay you pay like x amount of money and you could come in for an entire year you could book a session and you sit down with someone like me and we would just, whatever you wanted to learn or whatever you wanted to do, I would sit there with you for two hours and like just go over it. You want to learn how to like use Photoshop? If I knew how to do it, I'd sit there and teach you, right? And you could do that as much as you wanted. The amount of people that would buy this membership for their son or daughter and those kids would never use it was crazy. But it was always the older people that would, right? You know, people that literally have never touched a computer in their life. It was kind of interesting to see. And, you know, while I was working there, I realized that we really live in, like, the entitlement... Gen- like, we're the, enti- we're the entitlement generation. And I remember this guy, must have been, like, around my age, was having issues with his phone, right? And I knew exactly what the problem was. And I was like, look... This is what's going to prevent it from happening in the future, right? And he's like, he's like, he, his attitude is basically just like, whatever, just like replace the phone, like, blah, 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 it'll be fine. I'm like, you're going to have the same issue again, though. <laughs> like, I can replace the phone, but you're going to have the same problem again. And I just saw that same thing come up enough that kind of made me feel like, you know, we just want to know, can you solve this problem for me right now? Right. Here's the money, and I'll just keep it moving instead of. I'll come back when I need. I it feel again. like a large aspect of that though yeah. is learning how to read who you're talking to. Yeah. Right, yeah. and you need to also know how to approach those mm. type of people. Yeah, I agree because there were definitely times where you know, I think the first couple times that happened to me, especially when I was younger, mm-hmm. I would try to push back on it, mm-hmm. and after a while, I was like, okay, like this is this type of person, mm-hmm. so this is how I'm going to deal with it. But it still didn't change this idea in my head that let me know, man, like there are a lot of people that don't actually want to learn mm-hmm. how to do some shit for themselves. Yeah. You yeah. said, when I was li- listening back to the episode <laughs> with Chris, you said something where it's like, uh, I never want to hire someone without knowing anything about the topic that I'm hiring yeah. them for. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right? But so many, I, f- I would say 90% of people don't do care. that. Mm-hmm. Don't care. Right? It's like, okay, I don't. I don't know how to do this. I'm going to hire someone to do Cool. But, like, you should at least know some sort of basics. I feel like right? if that's the case what that you're going to do that, you're going to hire an expert to do that. Yeah. I would like to take the time for the expert to explain it to me mm-hmm. so that yeah, I could ex- learn from them. Yeah. You know, not to just, like, trust them wholeheartedly yeah, yeah. of something that's, that's going to directly yeah. affect me. That's yeah. how you get robbed. Then that's how it is. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Help me understand, like, what's going yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Like, if, look, I'm not a plumber, right? Like, I don't know how to do plumbing. But if I hire a plumber, I'm probably at some point going to ask. ask questions. Yeah. Maybe watch. Mm. You yeah. know, not so I can then just be like, you know what? I watched a plumber this one time. I know what's going on. Yeah. It's so that if I hire another plumber, yeah. I know if I'm getting swindled or yeah. like yeah. he's doing the you job even, right. You didn't see what the last guy did. You have no mm. idea. I have no clue. <laughs> what if the plumber comes and asks me, so what did the last guy do? I have no idea. I don't know. You got to mm. ask him. I don't know, man. Um, right? So and then a lot of the times, too, when you get... Like, like you said, if if you're going to hire another plumber, if yeah. they did the same thing, mm-hmm. you in that way, you'll know if the first plumber wasn't very good right. and yeah. if the second one is better yeah. because, you can, you can because, because of the questions, yeah. because right. of the questions. Like, mm-hmm. that's something that is very important yeah. if moving forward, if you want to do something for yourself, mm-hmm. asking questions is the way to go yeah. because there's absolutely no way you can get anywhere without asking anything because for you to know something you need to ask about it yeah right you need to be curious about it no you're right 100 so. percent right um so we actually have questions 
that we lay out for every week. Um, she ain't new. She knows that. Yeah, she knows it. <laughs> uh, she listens okay. to all 60 episodes. Yeah, I'm you talking to her like she's brand new. <laughs> yeah, we we have these questions that we do. I, I'm sure you hear that every episode. He's looking at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> I've heard more. 60 episodes. <laughs> um, okay. So Is that first, not normal? What? That the people you bring on the show don't listen to, to your episodes? No, they. We. the thing is, we've... There's a handful of people that come that come in the episode that are new fans. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. a handful that are old fans that haven't still listened or yeah. here and there sporadically. Um, and then there are some that are new fans but go way back, mm-hmm. yeah. which mm-hmm. is cool. We haven't had those as guests yeah. yet. I've, I've, they messaged me, though. Like, I have people that are like, yo, I mm-hmm. found your podcast and binge watched like, the last, mm-hmm. so, like, in, like, a week. And I'm yeah, like, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. But, like, that's hours actual, of your life. <laughs> yeah, but, like, actual guests, that most people, either they already know us, mm-hmm. um, they listen here and there, but, like, I don't, I personally, I probably know maybe, no, maybe under six people that have listened to literally every single one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that's a commitment. It is. Well, I, I, no, I, I'm fortunate a, enough to do it, like, weekly for yeah. the times right. when you did. Right, right. And then for, for the times when I was catching up, yeah. it was, it was like, commuting. Yeah. This yeah. is what I'm going to do. A bunch of them, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, the first question we have uh, is in regards to meeting the parents. Um, have you ever been disliked when meeting parents? And how did you handle that? It could have been like you know maybe in a relationship you, or it could have been in a situation where you're not fully dating yet, but you mm-hmm. meet the parents. Has that ever happened to you? I've never been disliked because if I actually have opportunity to to like get to know them, yeah, they always like me. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I've been rejected where it's like there's not even like to to not like me. You don't not you don't not like you don't care. You don't not like me. It's you don't you really? don't, you don't care. So, for example, there was, uh, there was a girl I was dating years ago, and when I met her dad for the first time, it was... And on top of it, for people who are... Whether you're introducing yourself to your parents, or you're going to be going to someone's parents' house to see for the first time, don't... One, make sure the person knows that you're coming. That is very important. <laughs> like, make sure the parents know like yeah. discuss with that person and make sure they're like does you like do your parents like know that like, I'm coming do they know this is the day like I'm coming like yeah. it shouldn't be a pop up surprise it shouldn't be a oh by the way <laughs> it should like that is not how you want your parents to meet especially yeah. if it's in their house no you know? especially yeah. it, yeah. it cannot be a oh by the way <laughs> Kathleen's here yeah. like that is not yeah. that's not a position you want your parents to be in. Mm-hmm. It's not a position you want the person you're with to be in. Yeah. And it's just a very u- uncomfortable position. Here's my example. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> and here's my example. <laughs> here's, my, here's Exhibit A. <laughs> so I'm um, with this girl. I had met a, <laughs> bro, that was such an essay. Like, right? <laughs> Yo, university does that to you, bro. I know. And here's your therefore. example. Yeah. <laughs> therefore, <laughs> I'm a writer. It's like yeah. I've, I've mm. placed things. Um, Furthermore. So. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I, I, had, I hadn't met her parents for the time I was with her for almost uh, just over a year, so I've never seen her parents. Yeah. And That's a long time. It was a long time. Yeah. And wow. um, so the first time I'm about to see her parents, uh, she's like, oh, just just come over and just watch a game. Like, a, I think it was a football game or basketball game, one of the two. Can't remember which one. Okay. But she's like, oh, do you want to just come by like and just watch a basketball game? Yeah, I'm like, and I've never been to her house, mind mm-hmm. you. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, actually, I've been to like, I've been to her house, but never when the parents were home. Yeah, it's like it, you know what I'm talking about. When yeah. you you're there, but the parents yeah. aren't there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so this is the first time I'm like, oh, but your parents are home. Yeah, it's fine. Just come. I'm like, oh, you, you sure want me to come today? Yeah. And it was it wasn't daytime. It was like mm. 9 p.m. So I'm like, it's also pretty like She's pretty brave. I'm conscious yeah. because She's brave. Yeah. because I come from, because I come from a black home. Mm-hmm. I'm conscious of like things like time, mm. like duration, yeah. like mood. What was yeah. your like, ethnicity? Right. <laughs> Mood. Mixed. She was mixed, right? Okay. Yeah. So mixed I, with black. Mixed with black. Okay. So black and white. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I know from my place, I'm like, I'm not bringing no one home at late at night mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. first. That's not happening. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be daytime, broad daylight. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they're in a good mood at the Christian prep, hours. Uh, prep mm-hmm. all that. Christian <laughs> so, hours. So I was like, you know what? Like, like she's confident about this. So I was like, okay, cool. Like I'll, I'll come by. I'm like, you sure? Like it's cool. Yeah, don't worry. Just come. We just come watch the game, eat some food, whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. So I come over. The parents are upstairs. And I'm like, oh, your parents are here? Like, I'm still being conscious of, like, it's not, mm-hmm. it's 9 p.m., but 
you just the, mm. when you're raised a certain way, like you're yeah. still like, it's like, like I'm you not gonna should. be yelling in your house at yeah. night yet. So I'm like, your parents, yeah, they're just upstairs. I'm like, okay, okay, but they know I'm here. It's like, no, but they'll, they'll come see you. I'm like, your parents don't know I'm here. I'm out. No, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay. So I was sitting there watching TV, <laughs> watching TV, eating. Comes downstairs, and he calls her. Right, he doesn't even come all the way down. He just comes down to like the edge of the stairwell. Right. So I'm in the living room. He comes down to the edge of the stairwell, and let's say. Let's say your name is Brenda, right? Keep on, keep on. Yeah. Uh, let, let's say your name is Brenda, right? So he comes out to the end of the stairs, and he goes, Brenda. So I hear him. This is the first time I'm hearing him, right? Yeah. So I'm like this. I'm like, I can't see him. I can hear the voice, mm-hmm. right? He goes, she goes, yeah? He goes, come here for a second. So she, she gets up off the couch. So I'm just sitting there just like, oh, fuck. Is the dad I'm, black? Huh? The dad's black? The, the dad was white. Dad's white, the dad's okay. dad's white, okay? Interesting, okay. I'm black. The dad's yeah. white. So he goes... <laughs> He goes, can you come here for a second? So she goes, oh, yeah, no problem. Remember, this, it's not like she's far away. She's just mm. over the stairs. All I hear is, I thought you said you were going out. Oh, yeah, I, I was going to go, but then I, I decided to just come inside. Oh, you never told me you bring company over. Like, not only is he talking to her, like, like, you're not like I'm not there. It's it's in this stern, like, <laughs> like you never told me company was coming over. Like, company, like... <laughs> Like, not like this is a, mm-hmm. a secluded convo in the door, like, yeah. in the stairwell. Like, it's it's loud enough for me mm-hmm. to be like, I'm just on my phone, like, mm, yep. <laughs> Never told yeah. me company was over. And she's like, yeah, I just we decided to just, like, just come by instead of, you know, going out. He, he goes, okay. She comes back over. He doesn't come down yet, right? So I'm like, make things good? She's like, yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, this ain't fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, this, this is not this fine. Is not fine. So, I'm still, so I'm watching the game still, like, trying to act like normal or whatever. He comes down, like maybe four, four or five minutes later, he comes down, and just me being nervous, like, I get up, just like, out of courtesy, I'm just like, I'm like, hey, like, hello, sir, good evening, whatever. He goes, yeah. <laughs> Literally looks at just me and goes, yeah, I had, my, bro, I had my hand on, like, he goes, yeah, walks him into the kitchen, I'm just like, all right, cool, 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 whatever. I go back and sit down, and I'm like, I look at her, I'm just like, cool, whatever. He gets a drink or whatever from water, goes back upstairs. So I'm just sitting there and she, I'm like, is, is he okay with me? Yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. I'm like, uh, okay. Literally 30 seconds later, it's time for your friend to go home. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like okay. <laughs> Got up. Oh, when she's like, she's like, yeah, just don't worry. Like, I'm like, no, no. I'm, I'm good. I'm like, no, you can. I'm not staying. There's no way. There's no way. And I left. That was, I never saw him again. How long did you she, see her She for? tried to, to With, convince is, you to stay? Yeah. She's like, no, don't worry. Like, she's wild. He's going like, to go back up door. I'm like, listen. No. No. I'm good. I'm good, mm. love. I'm gone. <laughs> oh, my but, God. Yeah. And that was... But I've always had good experiences with parents because one that has some circumstances, cir- circumstances like that. Yeah. And when I do get to know parents, like, I'm super cool like mm. with, with parents. I'm just really chilling myself. But that was the first time, like, I was like, yo. Did you get to meet them formally after that? No. No? That we, was the one and only? That was the one and only. One and only. Wow. And I just left it there. Did you see her after that? I saw her, but mm. didn't go anywhere after that. Mm. Because for me, I'm like, I'm so family oriented. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm, I'm so close to my parents. And I, and my parents are close to their parents mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. That like... I never want to be in a position where I'm trying to convince mm-hmm. someone, like someone's parents, not even to just like me, to just yeah. even just be open mm-hmm. to me being around. Like, I, I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, like, hi, nice to meet you. Like, I, mm-hmm. I'm i not that guy. Yeah. I never want to be the nervous meeting the parent. I'll never be that nervous yeah. meeting the parents yeah. guy. And the fact that I even had that feeling of like, does your dad not? Like, mm-hmm. I, look, I never want to have that, you know? Mm-hmm. It never wants to be like, you never want to be telling your partner, of course my mom likes mm-hmm. you. Like, mm-hmm. come on now. They should feel it. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's something that should be very, like, clear. So, it's what about very, you? It's very interesting coming from my family background. Yeah. Just because of the fact that I'm not I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but um, in Filipino culture, traditionally, there's um, there's courtship. Mm. Are you guys aware of what that is? So, essentially, what it is, um, in the Philippines, it's, it's practiced for when you're of age to date, which is 18. Mm. Um. As a woman, you are encouraged to have multiple suitors, mm. so to date multiple men, and to have your options open. 
right? And um, for for like a man, by your choice or their choice? Yeah, as as your choice. Like okay. as a woman, yeah. you can you can date multiple multiple men, and then um, for your options, and then as a man, as a sign for for like your seriousness per se, you're supposed to only date one one woman at a time while you're doing many. Yeah, hmm. as hmm. So it's kind of like backwards yeah. that way. Yeah. Some role but, reversal over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, so you you can date. In the dating, are you guys allowed to have sex? Um. Well. Is that a rule? A specific rule? But or no? it, are specified. you are you are you are you asking about my family or for for Fil- it, I guess the, because the, for for Filipinos the um, majority of the population are Catholic or Christian. Okay. So so they don't believe in right. sex before marriage per okay. se. But um, So it's just literally just to be dating. Here yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Mm. So um in regards to to dating, you can you can date multiple people, but um if you want to pursue someone exclusively in an exclusive relationship, you need to introduce them to your family. Mm. And if your family doesn't approve of them, you can't see them. Yeah. Right? Like so just, it's just not happening. Yeah, it's just <laughs> not happening. That's that's just how it is. Yeah. And um I've, I've had, like, I need to be very um, thorough and specific with who it is that I decide to be exclusive with, because it's not like I can bring just any guy mm-hmm. to, to the table and like, listen, this is someone that I want to yeah. pursue a relationship with. So um, in a sense of being the guy who, who receives that, um, I come from a very large family. Um, I have five older brothers and three older sisters. Wow. Right. Holy I'm shit! The I'm the youngest of nine. Wow. Yeah. So Yo, didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So um, for oh my, my sister, yeah, brothers. yeah. So for my sisters, are sisters, they all same friends? Um, everyone same friends or no? Uh, no. So the first six are from my dad's first marriage. Okay. The seventh is from my mom. The yeah. last two, including myself, are from both of them. Yeah. But my mom raised all of us. Okay. Yeah. Under one roof. Right. But it's not like, oh, that's my brother from my dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's my brother from my, like, that's my brother. Sibling, that's yeah. my sister. Like, just yeah. exactly. And so, um, for my sisters, and there's a large age gap for us. So, I got to see the whole um, courtship mm-hmm. happening. Um, so, the suitors that I had, fortunately for them, they didn't get to be exposed to all my brothers and mm-hmm. my dad and all my family. But my sisters, they weren't fortunate enough because... Um, our family was still so so together under one roof at the time, and so when my sisters' suitors so came, boys had to go through the brothers. Yeah, and my dad, and my dad, the, bo- the brothers, and then the dad. Yeah. Let me just, let, oh. Kathleen. Let me just say this. <laughs> I have, I've, I think I've only, never experienced. That. I think only one time in my life I've been in a situation where I was not maybe date. Yeah, I was dating one girl, and she had brothers. But they were all younger than me. Yeah. Mm. So when I showed up, it was kind of this dynamic where it's just like they had to just look at me and be like, "Yeah, we know what you're doing with yeah. us." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do? But what are we? What are you yeah. gonna do yeah, about yeah, it? Yeah. Like that's how that's how I was kind of looking at them. Like, Bro. what are you gonna do about it? Mm. But I've never been in a situation like, and I've always. I'm surprised. I'm fortunate. I've never. I've never. I've never had to do with mm. someone's older brother. But I, yeah, I'm surprised. I've never, I, like of all and, the people I've talked to, I've never. And here's the thing. Crazy. Quite honestly. I feel like it would make me kind of uncomfortable. No, this <laughs> like, is the whole point. This is the whole see, point. Like, because I know that I, I'm good in those situations, but having to sit across from another man <laughs> who's not the father, yeah. he's like the brother, the so, middleman, the middleman. So yeah. I have to talk to the middleman and I have to look him dead in the eyes and he knows what's going on. Yeah. Are you are you a sleaze bag? Like, he's asking all these questions. <laughs> you gotta be like, Yes. <laughs> and he's like, then leave. <laughs> okay. And you know what it is too? It's um where we lived in the Philippines is we have a family um farm mm. where it's uh four hundred and thirty acres. Yeah. So it's very large land. Mm. And so to get from the city to to the to where we live is like an hour and a half yeah. driving. Yeah. Right. So it's a it's a journey mm. for for you to make your way all the way over there to meet the family. Right. Yeah. And um my my father as well as my brothers they they're hunters, mm. so they have a full. It's like this room with filled guns. filled with guns, yeah. right? right? And the first stop of the tour is the gun closet. Yeah. is the gun room, yeah. right? And then so, <laughs> and the girls like my sisters or my mom they, they weren't allowed to be in the room when they took the guy in the mm. room. So you know you don't really it's just, know it's just the man what's, and the guns. What what's, what's being so let's, said? Let's talk. And um, so it was so funny because I remember there was this there was this one time my sister, she she 
was dating this like punk rock dude yeah. who colored what, his here hair. or back no, home no, back home yeah and he colored his hair like he had like green highlights mm. right and they're approaching and we're all like outside in the front yard and um this like he hasn't even fully stepped out of the vehicle right like i want you yeah. guys to picture this he opens the door and as soon as you see like the hair yeah. and my dad sees the green he's like make that boy go home he wasn't having it. He didn't even let him get out of the car. Man, can you, can man, you imagine? Man said, lift your foot up. No. And put it back was in no the way. vehicle. Make that boy go home. He shouted it like across the field to my sister. Like in my dialect. He's man. like, make that boy go home. Man said. Oh. And my sister read my dad's tone. And all she could say, come on, let's go. Don't worry about this. No, don't worry. Let's just go. It's better. Just don't worry. Just let's just what? Don't worry. Like, we're just, it's okay. <laughs> she just looks at well. Phone water lasted. <laughs> Shake yeah, so, hands. Look, right? so, we're, yeah. so we're done. Yeah, like, no, okay. and that, that's we're, just we're how done. it is. Yeah, and so I liked you though. <laughs> but we're done. we're done. You hear that guy? We're yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> you hear? You see him? <laughs> you see the other <laughs> six <laughs> mans behind him? No, <laughs> we're done. And my dad. Oh my god. I'm I'm not intimidated by many people. Yeah. But my dad's appearance. He looks like um. He looks like he could be the leader of like Spanish mafia. Like angry? He looks angry. No, because my dad is Spanish. He's mm. he's um he's Spanish blood. And the thing is with him is he has that pure like Spanish look about him. And mm. he has I learned how to braid by braiding my dad's beard mm. because it's like here. Do you ever, did you ever like, wear dark aviators like dark glasses? Um, yeah, he does. Fuck. He does. <laughs> and you know my dad, my dad is like legit the definition of badass mm. everything that you think about in terms of like a badass dad Pablo that, Escobar? That's, that's my dad <laughs> yeah like I'm, that's who i'm like Pablo. in my head i'm picturing <laughs> did, he, did he ever have like do you have a gold chains no so so the, the, <laughs> can i give him throw the gold on him that's, <laughs> like, that's too much no, because my dad my dad is a cowboy mm. so so you know oh, those ones like God. with the yeah. with the thing yeah, yeah. That, that's what he had yeah. and so um in the philippines when you go to school as as the boys you're supposed to have a buzz cut like yeah. you can't have long hair mm-hmm. right and my brothers all had long hair. Yeah. And so they were constantly in trouble. And um, there was a new dean of discipline in mm. the school. And they took all five of my brothers out of and class. And um, took them to, to their room. And they're, like, allowed to touch you in the Philippines. So, yeah. so like, they pulled my brother by the hair. Yeah. Right? And so um, my eldest brother called my dad and told him what happened. So my dad comes in. And he has his gun, like, right <laughs> yeah. here. And my dad's hair is like, his, one. <laughs> my dad's hair is to his ass, yeah. and it's braided mm. every day. So right? what's wrong with hair? And so no, 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 no. So so he comes and he walks over to to the dean's desk, puts his gun in front of the dean, and goes like this to the dean's hair and like pulls it. He's like, so what do you have with my boy's hair? Yeah. Like what problem do you have with my boy's hair? Man said, touch my right? head, <laughs> touch my braid. And then and then the guy <laughs> and then the dean is like like. Like shaking, right? Yeah. And he's like, he's like, touch my boys again, and you'll be at the front of this. And then he pointed to the front of the gun, and I was like, when I heard that story, what, what I was like, are you are you kidding? And then there was there was this other story where um we had trespassers in the farm, mm-hmm. and they had to wake my dad in the middle of the night, and then they they went to go to go see him. There were like employees surrounding them, yeah. And um the guy he had like a shotgun pointing at my dad. Um, and he's like, who do you think you are in my yeah. land pointing that gun at me? Yeah. And he took the shotgun, snapped it in half, like with his knee. <laughs> like, can you imagine the Scar- type of, the type of man <sighs> that is? And that's what every single suitor has had to face. Let me ask you this. So d- like, did your sisters ever explain the lore of your father before but, no, but the, <laughs> like, did, like did they let them know like this is who they're dealing with in advance but the thing is in the philippines my family is very well known so anyone who dates my sisters know who their dad is and these men's willingly they still, try. Still, still took this risk <laughs> not on their a game you know what i mean like yeah because my thing is it's like if i was ever in that situation and i'm like oh that that's that's your family. Um, I have to, at that moment, as soon as you hear the name, you know, deep down as a guy, you know if you're good mm-hmm. or if you're not. Yeah, don't yeah. even bother. If you you're know? going, I'm coming dressed to the nine, to the T. I'm doing all Clean. my studies on guns. <laughs> like, so I have things we'll to talk, talk about. about. Oh, yeah. I'm fucking I, asking him if he needs new cowboy that's boots. Research like, <laughs> that's a research paper. No. That's a research paper. 
Seriously. If I'm serious, I'm doing that yeah. research. Like, I'm going to be sure. like, listen, honey, I'm not going to see you for the next week. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. studying. I'm studying. <laughs> like, locked in. Mm-hmm. That's why for yeah. me, specifically, I'm very, um, very, like I said, I'm very specific on who I decide to pursue mm. an exclusive relationship with. My my current boyfriend right now, I, um, I actually met him while I was still seeing other people. Yeah. So he was one of the people that I was I was seeing. Oh, you made um, the rounds, huh? So I you made, I met him yeah, during my whole phase. Of madness. Yeah. I met him during my whole phase. Mm. Yeah. Basically. Did he know? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. Um we have we have a large age gap. Mm. So we're seven years apart. Oh, yeah. And um when I explained to him that like I'm I'm seeing other people, he's like, Do you think like I, I've done that? It's not from me. Yeah. yeah. So um Oh, but just like you know, but because because my thing is, um, when I'm in that stage mm. of like not being exclusive to you, when I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah. But when I'm not, don't think about me because I'm not thinking about you. Right. Like yeah. that's that's just how <laughs> yeah, I am. Right? I mean, that's yeah. what it is. So, yeah. And then it's if you can't handle that, then, yeah. then you can't handle that. Right. And um, my I'm very open with my family about the people that that I see. So I think it was about our our third or fourth date. Mm. Um, and I told my mom that I was going out. And she's like, is this the same, the same person? This, yeah. The yeah. same, you know? And then I said, I said, yeah. And then she goes, I want to meet him. Yeah. And I said, why? And then she goes, I just want to see who you've been spending time with. I said, okay, I, I, I respect that. And I can't, I, it's not like I can say no. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so, um, one day I told her, like, this was during our fifth date. Mm. I said, you can, cause he's always said, okay, I'll come to your door. To like pick it. and I always thought like no stay in the car because yeah. I don't want to expose you to my family yeah, yeah. if I don't know how I feel about you yet right, yeah. right? because I don't want to mix that mm. if I'm not sure yeah. and um, that's just me mm. and then so I told them on the fifth day I was like okay you can come to the door and he's yeah. like what changed and yeah. I'm like my mom wants to meet you yeah. and then he's like oh okay so he comes at the door and then um, I didn't let him inside yeah. I just told him mom He's here. Yeah, so yeah. my mom came with me to the door yeah. just so that she can see like what he looks like. Yeah. And they, they got introduced that way. And then the what, next what time... What race is your boyfriend? He's Jamaican. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's his family is from Jamaica, but okay. he was born and raised here. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, yeah. And then in regards to in regards to that, a few days later, um, my mom's like, we're having a party. Bring him over. Invite him. Right? Mm-hmm. And then I said... Um, no, not yet. Not yeah. yet. Because, because I still wasn't sure yeah, yeah. yet, is right? Your, is your dad still back in the Philippines? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. my parents, they're separated. Mm. So my, my dad's business is in the Philippines mm. and we're, we're here. And so, um, I wasn't ready for that. So I said, I said, no, not yet. But, um, while they were there, the, the people who were there, we went out and he got to come inside and got to meet people mm. as passing. Mm. Right. And then the next time, that's when he came to like, a bigger party so it wasn't very intimate yeah. and then so they got a feel of who he was at that time and then when i was kind of um in terms of like i knew how i felt that i did like him yeah that's when we invited him for for dinner like mm. for as an immediate family yeah and then that's when you you get the, the i approve mm-hmm. or yeah. not type of thing and then um from there you you figure out whether it's going to be exclusive or yeah. if it's just something that you just want to pursue casually stuff like mm. that, and so um, it was a long process yeah. in terms of because it was sounds I think, like the royal, <laughs> the royal process. No, it sounds like an episode like the weakest link. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it honestly, like as scary as some of it sounds, mm-hmm. it all it also seems like it'd be kind of fun yeah. in a way. It is, it is very yeah because fun. It, we don't I, do that shit anymore. Yeah, because if I was like very into yeah. the girl. Mm-hmm. And you like, go through the stages. I'd be like, okay, like, like mm-hmm. I'm gonna try my best. I'm, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm on the next stage now. You're you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna try my best. Like, I'll be and texting it, my boys, being like, yo, I made it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm in the next no. ground. It shows it because it shows your commitment as a guy. Yeah. Um, when you and when it's in a situation like that, it's kind of like fair game, where they, my brothers and like my family specifically, the way they do it is they they tease the guy, mm-hmm. so they they like they roast him and stuff. Yeah. And they see how he handled it, and then like if if he He's if immature. he if he, like, fuck y'all then. <laughs> if he jokes like, around whoa. too, yeah. like that that's a good thing. But then like if he can't if he can't handle it in the way that they would like for him to handle yeah. it. Then it's like, oh no, yeah. I don't. I'm not feeling this. Oh, he's a like, pussy. You yeah. know, like wow. exactly, exactly. <laughs> wow, that was fun. Well, <laughs> get so, out. <laughs> and so because of something Stop. like that, yeah. sorry, 
Am I stopping? No, no, no. Oh, okay. And then, so because of, of something like that, I choose when I'm ready to meet the parents. Yeah. So if the person that I'm with says that, oh, I want you to meet my parents, but I'm not ready, then I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Because so you won't, you won't meet unless you're ready. You won't meet theirs yeah. unless you're ready. Unless I'm ready. Right. Because I don't ever want to put myself... It's a, it's a, in, it's in a, a pressure. A, yeah. I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm doing something for you that I don't want to mm-hmm. because that's not something that I practice. What if what if you're, you're ready, but mm. the other person isn't ready yet? I can't force them. Oh, okay. That's, the, like, that, yeah. that's something that yeah. they have to, to take upon yeah. themselves. And if you're not ready for for good reason, mm. you know, then it's completely understandable. You take your time. Yeah. But if you're just not ready just because, like, foolishness, like, mm. that's... Okay, then what am I doing here? Bye. No, you know? that, makes, that makes total sense. So, Damn. That's just how it goes. <sighs> that's crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm just like picturing a scenario where, like, just knowing me, I I just, I think I would find the situation just funny. You know, I'd find funny moments in it. What, what situation? That, like, whole scenario, oh, like, being in all of that. Yeah. You know, because. I feel like I'd be, like, you. I feel like you would just do, we would just do it. Yeah, I would do it. Like, like, if I'm oh, into the oh girl, of course yeah. I'm gonna do it. The thing is, you know, you, the, I think the you, older okay, the way earlier I said I don't know how I'd react right. if it was like mm-hmm. an older brother, older brother situation. I also have like two two older brothers, so I understand what it's like to get roasted yeah. by like yeah. mans that are older mm-hmm. than me, that. doing that type yeah. of stuff. But like that's so, that's the whole purpose of it, right? Yeah. In the sense of. Um, no one's gonna go through all that trouble if they're not actually into you. Because, I mean, so it's, it's there's like, some dogs that will. I mean, but th- th- <laughs> yeah. that's Until your he fucks, he's out but of that's that. your fault as yeah. a woman for not reading into that. There's sooner. no that's not that's not fair or true to say, because I ha- like you know, and I'm sure you know even as a woman mm. that if a guy says all the right things and does all the right things, how could you possibly say you should have known? But I feel How? like I feel like when you're in a position mm. where it's it's something like this that it's this sensitive where it's uh, it's when you're gaining your family's approval yeah. for for a make it or break it situation because mm. like I said without that approval you can't pursue the relationship right, right. traditionally that's how mm. it goes so if you are in a position where you're gonna risk it yeah right wouldn't you go through a, like a very thorough screening process. Before yeah, you put yourself in a position, I like think that? I think I realistically really, you would, exactly. but the pro but, like, the, but the problem is, speaking from a guy's perspective, mm-hmm. it's easier for us to say that. I know that if I was to say the right thing, like if I just wanted to have sex with you, mm-hmm. and I was gonna be a dog about it, I know based on the things that you're telling me that you're looking for, mm-hmm. it's like. For some dogs, it's just like, okay, so if I just do this, X, Y, Z, just do that. that's what's going to happen. Okay, right? but but what I'm saying is if if I want, as a woman, if I if what I want from you yeah. is sex, yeah. we don't have to be in that stage for us to pursue of sex. Of course not. Yeah. But you under... Okay. There's... there's Go ri- ahead, Ryan. There's, Go wait, ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to say stuff out mm. loud and you're going to realize whether or not it makes sense mm. to you. So... There are men who just want sex. There are women who just want sex. Mm. But what the problem is, is this communication line between the man who just wants sex and the woman who just wants sex is sometimes fuzzy because if no one says that or voices it, then both people go on this ride of like, Let's do I'm this. not yeah. sure if that's all he wants and I'm not sure if that's all she wants. So we, you kind of just go through it. And if, are you generalizing that? No, I'm not even generalizing because if, if you're saying... Like for example, let's say you want a relationship, mm-hmm. right? And he, only he wants sex. Okay. It's it's not it's not for you per se. Mm-hmm. It's if you're looking for a relationship and only he wants sex. Okay. And he's doing all the things that you want in terms of someone who, who you want to be in a relationship with. Mm-hmm. How can you determine if that's authentic or not? If he's doing literally everything that you want to happen up to the point of you meeting your parents and he does it and it's not that it's not like he's faking it mm-hmm. but he's going to the emotions like all I gotta do is do this take a mm-hmm. couple dates make sure your parents like me whatever and then if he fucks you if he's not really all the way there in terms mm-hmm. of relationship how would you even know if he's literally done everything you wanted and he's and he hasn't voiced all he wants is sex mm-hmm. because it's very rare for a guy to truthfully say to a girl all I want is sex even though they think it 
do you feel like that's that's when you say it's it's um it's rare for a guy to say that do you feel like it's it's um rare for a woman to say that too i think there's a stigma behind men and women just saying that they want to have sex right i mean okay prime example you got you got these apps like tinder bumble hinge like i personally think when people are using these apps like granted oh, oh shit. so good I think when people are using these apps, um, granted, I'm coming from a position where the last girl I dated, mm-hmm. her and I ended up dating because yeah. we found each other on Tinder. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when we met up, like, it was, there was like, okay, like, we're going to have sex mm-hmm. kind of situation. I personally think if you download those apps, whether you're a man or woman, you're more likely using those apps because... There's you. an underlying intention with those apps. I personally don't yeah. think it's underlying. Like I think it's, it's like bold. I think it's very blatant. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you're using these apps because you want to get laid. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. The problem is though people apps specifically like Tinder. Yeah. Or just Let's online just, dating apps. Not I, I was both. I'm gonna talk about both, but um, I'll say, I I think apps specifically like that because yeah. uh, because of the speed and the ease which of, you go through and the it, ease right? of yeah of allocation yeah. of people mm-hmm. like so, an online dating apps like you're literally telling about yourself mm-hmm. like just yeah. like mm-hmm. no one cares about all that in tinder oh like, so that that's not a screening process for for tinder you know it, it's not mandatory oh okay like yeah. there's online dating apps like your profile can't yeah, be yeah, completed yeah. until yeah you actually give me some shit to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah stuff like that so let's say we use tinder as an example you know i think personally if you're using it it's because you know you want to get laid mm-hmm. i think there's nothing wrong with that but the problem is when people are using these apps, they often put up this front, like, that's not what I'm using this app that's for. That's so stupid. Like, people will say things like... I'm not trying to fuck. Because I've, I've used... <laughs> I've I'm seen it. using it, right? I'm using if you're trying to fuck, day. swipe left. It's like... But so you, why are you here? What, what did you... You, come, you, you, you came here for a lifelong friend? Is that what you're talking about? Is what, that do you want, what do you want the app for? Like, this is what it's... A for. husband? So, <laughs> if there are apps that are specifically created for people to hook up, right. like, meet and hook up, and people are still going to play this game... Is no different than real life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's just personally how I feel. So I think there is a stigma to people just saying, look, I just I just want to hook up. And it's no different than for me, sorry to cut mm-hmm. you off, no, where it's, okay. it's like, you know, there's a philosophy where it's like sometimes you should, is it a problem if you have sex too early, right? With someone that you just met. Because I know for me that I don't want to, I don't want to be with someone if the sex is terrible, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But I, but I am also a person that feels things like very emotionally, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it can be not necessarily easy, but it can be hard for me to break break it off with someone if I've already become attached to them emotionally. But then I find out the sex is trash, mm-hmm. so now I'm in this predicament. Yeah. Right. So is it is it okay to say to someone, look, you know, I'm looking for a relationship, but I want to know if the sex is good because that's important to me. It is okay for you to say that. Okay, so but does it happen? But does it happen? It though? should happen. That's no, not should. It should. Does it happen? Does it, happen? It, ha- it happens to me because I feel like there's absolutely it's... no point to be ambiguous. So hold on, does it Do... happen to you because you're initiating that conversation? Because I, feel I feel like, like most guys and girls today aren't starting off very early in a, like the courtship, mm-hmm. the relationship, the dating period. Saying, "Look, I want to entertain a relationship." But I need to know if the sex is good. I'm no, I feel I feel like it's extremely important for you to to understand what your intentions are with that yeah. person to make it clear before you even attempt at doing anything else. But does it happen? Is what we're trying to argue. I the, I practice that. For you, for you personally, yeah, yeah, does it yeah. happen to you? Do men come to you and the people like, the people that I choose right to well, to, to 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 do anything with are. Are like that, and if if they're not, then I don't entertain them at all. But the reason I think they're like that is because, because you're, you're like that. That's you're what I'm saying. Initiating that you're, conversation because now. you're such a mm. forward person, you force them to give you an answer. Because I don't force them. No, no, not, not literally. Them. Yeah, not no, 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 okay, okay, not okay, 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 okay. Not literally forcing, but if if I'm talking to a girl for the first couple of times, right, mm-hmm. and we're chilling here, and then she's like, "Hey, listen," the combo comes and she goes, "Hey, listen," honestly, like I really like you, but. You know, if it isn't really going... Like, I've had situations mm-hmm. where girls actually does this to me, and I res- mm-hmm. I love it and I respect it, because yeah. it puts me on the right page, and I'm I'm also mm-hmm. for it. 
but it's even better when I don't have to do it first, mm-hmm. right? Because then I'm not the asshole. Okay. <laughs> but she has to, but that's, so but, is that is that what it is? As, yeah, that, so as a me, man, it's it's an asshole, but as a woman, it's forward. That's what it is. I I I can say it, I can view it like that because I don't, men will never view the woman as an asshole if she's like, listen, like I'm just trying to fuck, and this is the reason why because I'm actually like, I'm truly more turned on when girls are like. Honestly, yo, like, I just want to have sex. And mm-hmm. I'm like, really? Sick! <laughs> like, like, because, like, that just saved that combo for me. Uh-huh. Right? Like, I'm more turned on by that because I'm like, oh, my God, now I have to, like, pretend, like, <laughs> yeah, oh, like... like there's, a constant, it's, there's a constant struggle. Mm-hmm. It might be this very same for women, it might right? Be. But mm-hmm. there's a constant struggle in a man's mind when he, he meets a woman, right? Where, wherever it is, the first thing he sees when he meets her is like, okay, I think she's cute. I think she's hot. Like, mm-hmm. one of those two, mm-hmm. whatever. She's not, whatever. But more often than not, it's like a physical attraction yeah. first, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say I see this girl. I think she's cute. Then we start talking, and immediately I'm like, yo, she's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like, she's funny. Like, mm-hmm. She's nice. Already by that point, I know that I want to have sex with mm-hmm. you. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> But, like, I'm not, but I'm not gonna say just it. Just from a primal mm-hmm. level, like mm-hmm. not even like from a creepy. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. Like, just like I'm yeah. attracted to you, like it's attraction. It's right. laws of attraction. Yeah. Having sex. Right now, at, because I know so early on, mm-hmm. like when I say early, mm-hmm. it could be as soon as it's an a hour. visual thing, it, though. Yeah, it could, it could be. Within it starts the first, as a visual thing, and yeah. then it goes psychologically. Yeah, it right. could literally be within the first ten minutes, yeah. all the way up until I'll just say a day. The first day I meet you, I know if I want to have sex. Absolutely. I know in my head that I cannot say to you. I can't talk in that first day, maybe even week. What I'm thinking I can't right say now. Say that quickly. I know that it like. So if a woman says that to you within that first encounter, how so, how do so, you view it? I'm, so re- reason, I'm relieved. Yeah, cause I'm, I'm relieved, relieved because. Oh. Is there a negative like connotation there? As no, no, like and look, it always comes down to obviously. Your how approach. Things, like, the approach, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Because, yes, yeah, so a woman could say that to me off the jump, and yeah. if the approach is off, it'll mm-hmm. be... Yeah. I'll it's be like, like, you're okay. trying to fuck everyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no, there's there's a... Yeah. So, it, it is very valid, mm-hmm. but like Ryan said, the, the reason it's such a relief is because we know that there's some stigma with men specifically mm-hmm. saying, look, I just... I know that I want to have sex with you. Like, mm-hmm. I just want to have sex with you. And then see where it goes You know what's funny? I, <laughs> I wish... Like it's not possible, but I wish in the perfect world, it, this the situation for this this confusion to be mm. removed is really is like because like you're saying it starts with attraction for men, which is very true, and it's usually in reverse for women where it's like they may want to have sex with us, but they're like, do I like him first? Will I like before you? Mm. Not mm. I'm not saying you. Not no, all, no 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Not saying not all women, but yeah yeah. For men, it's literally like I can look at her. Mm-hmm. She's sexy. She's attractive. She's beautiful. I'd have sex. Yeah. It's literally just that direct. Yeah. For women, it does happen like that as well sometimes. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, the ones that go that route Mm -hmm. aren't looking for a relationship. Men that go that route can still want a relationship. Mm -hmm. Do you understand why it's like, why it's different for us is because we go through that, that step really early where it's like, she's pretty, she's this, she's this, I can fuck her. And I can still want a relationship after. Mm -hmm. But, if a girl's typically going through that, she's usually not on the relationship path, typically for women, mm-hmm. because when, in my opinion, when girls want a relationship, they're in reverse. They're like, what, what does he bring to the table? What can I, mm-hmm. what can I get from this? Like, mm-hmm. how do I feel around him? Am I comfortable around him? Am I shy? Am I nervous? Like, all these other things are in your head before you're thinking of the dating path. And then mm-hmm. sex would be like, oh, sex would be great as well. Yeah. But if, if it's in reverse, where it's like sex is at the, the primary thing for women... Mm-hmm they're typically also not wanting the relationship, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So it's, I just feel like if if men, which it's, if a man tells a girl, like, listen, like, if, if we're being honest in most situations, a man could be like, you know, I just met you. This would be the, this would be the conversation. Mm-hmm. Hey, this date was really sick. You know, we, we knocked it off. It was, it was great. You're funny. You're cool, whatever. Um, I want to fuck right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I want us to go, like, I want us to have sex right now. Mm-hmm. I also kind of don't because then maybe I might not talk to you again mm-hmm. because then I kind of, I got what I want, but I actually do want to know more about you. Mm-hmm. But knowing myself, if I do fuck you right now, mm-hmm. I might just add you to the list and then kind of like not give you a chance to get to know you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So I kind of don't want to have sex. But I do want to. Have, I do want to have sex. Yeah. But I kind of. I don't actually want to want to. But mm-hmm. I kind of still want to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But let's just not do it. However, if we did, would you want to right so, now? Like you know, like if mm-hmm. we did, like even if we don't do it, mm-hmm. would you? Would you want to do it mm-hmm. right now though? So would you, know you say? Would you say that that fuzziness that you were talking about earlier comes more from men in a situation like that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think like because. I think if 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 there's no pressure and no like connotation and no like awkwardness, I think men can really be like go on a date and be like, "Yo, we should definitely have sex." Probably not right now because it might just make things weird, but mm-hmm. would you be down? Like if we did, mm-hmm. would you be down? And if you're like, "Yeah, of course." Okay, cool, cool. Like I think I think that would like relieve so much mm-hmm. of that awkwardness cuz then now you can have the rest of the date and you're like, "So you but you would you you're thinking it though, mm-hmm. right? Like you would do it and you're like, "Yeah, I would." I don't want to yet because mm-hmm. I still kind of but you, I'm down. I'm definitely mm-hmm. down. You are? So, so Me too. In regards to you talking about how um, men are able to want sex, but then also still want the relationship, mm-hmm. but it's not like that for women. Um, have you met a woman that can do that as well? That, which, which, that, that wants sex, but can also look for a relationship also? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so, so what do you think differs from, from a woman who's not like that and a woman who is like that? Just would would you say it's because um, a woman who is like that knows what they want? Absolutely, I think especially with the reason I said that I'm I'm more turned on by women that are like, listen, I'm not looking for a relationship, I just mm-hmm. want to have sex, is because those tip from my experience, the women that are like that, it's like we all have our needs, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. We all have our needs, our wants, our dislikes, mm-hmm. our likes. But a woman that's like that, it's it's not, it doesn't come off as, like, slut to me. Mm-hmm. Because I've met some sluts where they're, mm-hmm. like, it's not a convo of, like... It's like the approach, like yeah. you were right, talking like, about. Yeah. Exactly. It's not a convo mm-hmm. of, like, listen, like, I do like you. I'm not really looking for a relationship right now, mm-hmm. but, like, I kind of just want to have sex with you. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't come off as, like, I'm just trying to fuck whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, because yeah. I've had, I've met girls that are like that, I'm like, mm-hmm. get, get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But when it comes off like that, it's kind of, like, we, none of us really, none of us really know who we're really going to date, and if we're really looking for a relationship, if we're being honest. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. We all act like, you're like, yeah, for I'm, sure, for I'm sure. looking for a relationship. You're not, like, you think you are, like, mm-hmm. you don't know. We, I feel like it's extremely important, remember, like I said, to, to know what your intentions are right. with, with a person. Because um, in order for you to do that, you need to know what you want. Right. And when you know what you want, it's so easy. It, it's yeah, honestly, like, it's so easy, regardless if you're a man or a woman. Right. And I feel like every single person should take the time Mm. to reflect on on what it is that they want because moving forward that's just like i said if you take the time yeah. to to talk about it then it will prevent so many things in the future like that awkward so what are we i hate when talk I hate, I hate it because like i i remember there was Never there was once a guy asked me that mm. they're like so what are we and point blank that ass i'm like we're happy. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And th- th- that's that's all I said. I'm like, like honest, why yeah, why do you why do you have to complicate yeah. it, right? But then that goes to show Kathy that is like a savage. Oh. chill. She's actually <laughs> she's actually sad. She goes we're we're happy. Okay, yeah. so let me tell you a story. I'm, I'm having sex. You're okay. having sex. Okay. Why uh, why are we talking about anything else? Can I can I say <laughs> a story? Actually, yeah. I want your opinion on it, both sure. of you. Um, there was this mm-hmm. guy that I had worked with a few years ago. And, um... Fucking your coworkers, huh? No, no. Uh, well, okay, listen. That's a different story. <laughs> mm. No, so, for this Sad. one, for this one specifically, um, we were both with, um, with other people. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you meet someone and the attraction is there, mm-hmm. even though you're, you're with someone, so, so you just, like, leave that be, right? You're just and like, then, get out of here. Yeah, and get then, get then basically, basically, get away from a, me. a couple of years later, we're both single, and, um, we ran into each other. So, it's like, naturally, it's like, oh, so... Wait, how so, did you run into each huh? other? Facebook, like, and no, it just because, <laughs> because no, 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 and then he messaged me. He's like, hey, I was there. So you, so actually, so. Didn't, you actually didn't run into each other at but, all, to be honest. Okay, okay. So, but anyway, <laughs> so, essentially. You didn't even see him. He saw you. No, yeah. And then so. so um, this whole story's a lie. Okay. <laughs> go on. Go on. <laughs> wow. Wow. Can I continue? Yeah, yes. Fine. Okay. So. Um, so you bum shoulders. Yeah. Like like this. Yeah. And then um, he, he messaged me. And then we from there, 
we're like, okay, um, let, let's go out, right? Let's catch up. And then um, he would he would come over, and we would just we would just talk in the front yard, and um, that was that. And then a couple of times he would he would pick me up from work, and then I'm bring me back home. And I I basically flat out told him I said, hey, listen, like this is what I'm looking for. If you and which is I, what I told him I said like I'm very attracted to you. Mm. I I've always wanted to know mm. what it's like to act on that attraction mm. yeah. right and i said but i'm seeing other people mm. and i need you to understand that right. if yeah. you're not okay with that jump from now because i'm not going to change for you mm-hmm. yeah. that, that's what i told him right and he's like i'm not okay with you seeing other people and i said okay then it can just it can just end here yeah, right. like we can we can just pursue whatever whatever else but oh. don't expect any sense of of adjustment yeah, exactly like, for, from me yeah. right and then so he's like okay and then and then i kind of just like because i told him this is what i want from you i want mm-hmm. sex from you yeah. and um but these are the conditions like yeah. my conditions right and he wasn't okay with that and i'm fully respectful of that yeah i'm not gonna like no but i want to have sex you yeah. like you know those no, types okay, of things cool. yeah, yeah so so, so yeah. like do your thing i'm gonna do my thing and then a couple weeks later he hits me back up and he's like if it means i can be with you I'll deal with it. Your conditions. Yeah. Foolish, foolish. And then I said, I said, <laughs> but I don't want you to have to change right, just right. because of this. And then, and then he's like, he's like, no, I'll, I'll learn how to deal with it. And then says, I'll do whatever for that box. And I said, I said, <laughs> you know what? You can fuck wherever you want as long as I'm in there too. I and then, and then so so I <laughs> so what I said to myself is that you're a grown man, yeah. okay? You're a grown man. You you decided upon do yourself that you this is yeah. this is what you're gonna do, and you know already going into it how things are right and then so he picks me up from work and we have like a parked car conversation which escalated so fucking in the you car. know no which escalated and then oh you po- didn't fuck in the car no 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 oh, it, was, it was getting there it was getting really heated mm. he pulls it out and it's like this right she's using her pinky finger <laughs> <laughs> listen for, for those listen. listening to audio i thought micro penises oh were like like a myth but Kathleen's to see hand, it, Kathleen's hands are small, guys. No, but to see it though, <laughs> her pinky to see finger. It, oh to see God. it is a completely like you're in your seat and you're like, wow. And that was right? that was that was hard. So, that was erect? that was erect. Oh my, God. erect, my <laughs> guy. Like, and this is with girth and everything. <laughs> like, are you I, like? I'm, That's a stump. Like, That's a, <laughs> dead <laughs> eyes. It's like a thumb. And then so, and then. I was I was looking at that and I told him I said Did you just stare at it? I, I told him I said this is no can you take me home? Stop. No I, t- I, t- I like I'm not feeling well take me home right and he's like are you okay like I said yeah like I'm just not feeling well because at that in that moment I didn't know how to tell him that your dick is small like I don't know if he knew that or whatever or someone told so so that right so what what race was this guy? I he was Asian. The thing is, poor guys. And it was just like, okay, so so he drove me home, and then I ghosted him, like from that right. And I got to a point where like, like seven to ten missed calls a day from he this said, guy. He said obsessing. And he got so <sighs> obsessed, Ryan, for for months. I would say like a total of eight months. I would just see him parked outside of my house. No. Like three a.m. Like just staring at my house, like, no. in the dr- and I was so freaked. I'm like, he would, he would try to message me. He would go through, like, through. I know, I through know you're home. I can social, see. Social, like social media, <laughs> like, and then I. So in, I completely ghosted, like, yeah. to the point where, like, I. This is the one thing I wanted from you, and you couldn't even deliver that. Oh my like, god! Seriously? <laughs> and then one so thing I only I wanted. wanted one thing. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> you just delivered. and even if I do this with my index finger, it still wasn't like this. So like the one thing that I wanted, it was still wasn't even like this. Oh, and it was man. just so disappointing. disappointing. And so in terms of how I how so, I handled that as a guy, right. should I have told him? I said this on one of the early podcasts with uh Oh my god, what's her name? It's the one where you and I. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, not Tony. Um, no. It's terrible. It'll come to me. But basically, Ebony, Ebony yes, yeah, it was with Ebony. Ebony. And she had a very similar story. Mm-hmm. 
And I said, yes, I remember that, that episode actually. The only difference in the story was that this guy was moving with an energy mm. that said, "Oh, I'm I got mm. a big day." Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So it sounds harsh. It sounds easy for me to just say that I think women should tell these guys, mm-hmm. but only if he deserves it. We only feel. if he deserves it. But the problem is, like, if if no one tells this guy, listen, you actually have a small penis. Yeah, but he, he, this situation, he knew. Like, how, he, how can you not no, know, though? No, this but, is, no, but, she, but she asked, the question was, I know in this situation, this guy yeah. knew, I said that earlier. Yeah, yeah. But the question was, as a woman. Do you tell him? Do you tell like, guys? Mm. Like, like, period? Or just guys are at the How, moment, how like, could, it, because like, I would have thought that in a situation like that, when you go, like, when you go someone, like, I would say nine out of ten times, people get the hint. No, I right? for this situation, I feel you do not tell him. Because this situation, all that can do is hurt him, mm-hmm. right? That, like, that isn't, there's no solution with yeah. that. One, because he can't grow it. Yeah. And two, because it wasn't like he, <laughs> <laughs> he can't grow it. Yeah. And two, because you guys were just, it wasn't like he's coming at you like, yo, wait, so you yeah, come yeah, me up. Yeah, you know, yeah, he wasn't yeah. coming mm-hmm. at you just like, I like you, like, I, I love to do this. Okay, yeah, like, no, he was excited. But hold on. The what? thing is, if he was coming at her like that, right, with the energy... Mm-hmm. You need to shut that down. Yeah, you... You're no, shut, absolutely, that, but that wasn't like that. No, no, but, no he, but at he, that he, point, you, like, you're shutting him down to hurt him, and I would support that. Yeah. Right? Like, I would those support, guys you have to tell. Mm. Don't, but, <laughs> tell but the those thing guys. Is, but, okay, but now we're saying you're not what? supposed to tell the... This guy, I thought, was a nice dude. Now he's a psycho because he wouldn't leave her alone. But my thing is, like... You, he you, went to my work and asked to, for me. You have to tell these men. You have to tell them because the problem is... All of them? Yes, you have to tell all of them because they move around like... But it's not their fault that they're like that. Yeah, I know it's not their fault, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> you, don't know, they, you don't know if he was moving sick, though. You have, okay, no, but you have no idea how thing, he's though, moving. Here's the thing. Look, ju- like, I'm trying to play devil's yeah, advocate yeah. here because, <laughs> look, he... Yes, it's not his problem. Like, he, he was born that way. Yeah. But if you tell and him... And still has that same size when he was born. Yeah, if you... Wow, if you tell him... <laughs> if you tell him... Yeah. Hopefully... Hopefully at some point in his life, he realizes, look, I am not blessed in this area, but maybe I can, like, overcompensate somewhere else, I right? Wait. And I know... Look, I... Brian, look, we, we, we don't know what... I don't know that life. I don't know the life. I don't know the life. But <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. like, I'd like to think, if he gets told... Then maybe it's a situation where he can say, "Look, I'm a little embarrassed about this." Like, like I'm trying to imagine. What well, you want we... now? You want to start coming out with no, that? No, like... not just coming. Out. But listen, I'm trying. <laughs> look, I'm trying my best yeah. to understand what it's like from that perspective. And if I was like that, truthfully, if I was like no, that, no, no, no. But, but but the fact of the matter is, you don't know. So you don't know how he would react to that. No, but what I'm you... saying is, someone has to tell him. So why? Though? Of... But why me? Why look, me? For the same reason, that, look, you need to tell him for his own good. If you're okay. asking why me, it's because look, you don't give a fuck about him. You're not gonna fuck him. Exactly. Cool. So why do I have to? Why do I have to put for aside the, same, the time? No, to it, to justify what, why I didn't want to do that. What time? It's for the same reason that like you're willing to just ghost him, right? It'd be no different than saying to him, "Look, you have a look. The reason it didn't work out between us is because I was not a fan of the size of your penis." I didn't think it would help me sexually. This is the only Whatever t- it is, and then you ghost it. This then is you the, move the fuck on. This right? is the only time I can... I'm usually the asshole like that, but this situation... That is not an asshole thing to do. It is, and I'll tell you why. Why? Because, listen, so... It's only so, an asshole thing if you know that what no, you're saying is not true. No, no, no. Not even that. Because, let's be honest. As, as a man, right? Every single man who has some type of sexual, you know, activity... Has watched porn, every single one. Yeah. Has watched it or seen it on TV yeah, you know or seen, you, you know. know. Like we, so, so a woman telling you that like it's it's not. This isn't news. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like this girl needs to tell me it's small mm-hmm. for me to like. He holds this thing every day to pee delusional. and to and to have mm-hmm. sex and to jack off whatever. He's delusional. I don't want to listen. Until someone tells him, I don't he's think gonna live I don't in this want, world. He thinks it's okay. Like, I only yeah. think the guys think it's okay are the ones that are actually moving sick, like yo, blah blah. But he he just it's different. I don't feel like this he, man moving sick. Was he sorry. moving? Was he moving in, in a demeanor that he was like, yo, I'm blessed. Yeah, like not yeah. not, oh, not not like like 
on, but yeah. like subtle, subtle, like, like, like oh, just, just I, watch. Like, like, like if I ever get, you, like, you would just watch? Just watch. Oh my God. Like a just watch. Okay, like it was, it was never me. like, it was no, never like me. details, like in details in a sense of like, oh, I'm going to put you down. Like, no, you, you know, like, but it's like, just watch. Just like, okay, like so just he, those subtle, just watch. He like, lost my support. I'm sorry. So. Okay, no, no. Okay, now no. I'm on board. I'm yeah. on board some more now. Because I'm only reason I'm on board because I didn't know about the just watch. But not the just watch. But like regardless of what. The, nope. No, there's if no you, way. If you there's give, no way. Listen, this is the thing. The only reason I'm so, I'm so specific on this is because if someone is humble enough to keep this to themselves mm. and they're not asking, they're not like, yo, wait till I get you in bed. They're just like, mm. if they're just like, I would love to do this with you. And they're aware that the dick is small, but they're just kind of like, let me just see if I can get it to like. But there was no warning. That was like. He's not gonna. He's not gonna warn you. No, 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 no. But he's not gonna warn you. It was warning. Do you know what that sounds like? You know when you're so like you you know when you're turned on and you're turned on and you just you just want to go right. So can you imagine? Can you imagine the letdown? Yeah, but what do you want them to do? Okay, so what do you want them to do? So what's the equivalent to that for for women? So when you see it, what's the what's the equivalent for that? So what's if the, if there's a micro penis that that turns off women from men, yeah. what's the equivalent for reversal? Stench. So what do you the, what do you do in that situation? I don't. What, no, I, but I, what I if it's, per, what, But that's something that they can that no, they can change. False. No, because there's some women that have a stench. It, Are you talking about like their pH balances and all that? There's stuff? pH balance. There's you know. Some, but what's something that's physical? Other than that, there's not. I don't think there's anything physical about you know women in terms of sex that would stop me from doing it. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it has to be physical for it to be equivalent. It's just what is it something that they can't change mm-hmm. that would stop me from per- proceeding? For women, it's if his dick is small, you're like, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. For a man, if she smells, I'm out of here. It's not a discussion. Mm-hmm. It's not a and it, and it's the same type of awkwardness. Where but men can have that stench too. Does it vagina smell? <laughs> it, <laughs> Vagina smell is this. Listen, this vagina smell is like, dick is dick. Dick has its smell, but dick is still out in mm-hmm. external skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vagina smell is like it's. Anyways, mm-hmm. so, <laughs> but the the reason why I feel like it's a similar is because the same way you don't tell him about his size is the mm-hmm. same way men really tell women about their stench. Mm-hmm. That's why it's equivalent because you should be like, did you tell her it smell? It's like. But how do you though? But she, but see, because like, it, it's that same type is, of like this is the problem though. Sm- right? And we should be no, we but, should be no, doing this because then they someone has to say something. But okay, but here's the right? here's the issue. I think a lot of it comes down to is like how long have me and this person been entertaining each other, mm-hmm. right? Because okay, granted, let's say I've been going on dates with this girl for a couple weeks, a couple months, right? Mm. And we go to have sex. I realize her pussy smells, right? And I break it off. The chances of me telling her it's this is because, it's because of it's, this. It's because of this is a lot higher because if she was to like if she was really pressed with me, like like what happened? Like why did you go ghost? Like what's going on? Because I've invested so much time into you at this point, me personally, as a like my personality, I feel like okay, I feel like I have to tell How you. How would you phrase it? I'd be honest. I would phrase it. I would say, look, I I just <laughs> you wouldn't do it. <laughs> no, I would. Right now. No, I would. You would not no. do it some more. I would. You because you would. You're like I this, would. And the so reason, crushed. the reason, the reason I would, right. the reason I would is because I've told a girl yeah. who I stopped doing whatever right. with because I found it odd that she just never like she was not into giving head. Yeah, yeah, right. But that's so, right. But no, that's, and, but and, that's and, an act. That's a fun, exactly. No, that's, no, no. But although although it's an act. You telling someone like, "Look, you don't do this," I know, so I it will it, 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 no no so you easier. keep you keep saying it's easy, but I've spoken to women like I know women who literally can't, like they physically cannot do something like that. Like no, go, I know, but so I, I understand, so, but that's so, it, but that's an easy that's an easy thing to I, tell. That's, that's no, a preference, exactly. though. It's, okay, no, what's dude, the preference? Them going down on someone? Yeah, something, yeah. Something, yeah. That's, that's, very intimate thing. Okay, and, and so and so is literally. I think the moment you see someone else's genitals is intimate. No, we're talking about right? for you so, for smell, for smell. Like I'm saying, it's very easy to say I don't want to talk to you because you don't give head. Yeah, and that's kind of like, oh well, fuck. Well, that's just not what I do. So like, there's no like, oh, it's me. no. But the like, <laughs> you know thing is, it's like no, it's like, I don't give head. It's no, like, but, well, he's, I'm not giving head. Okay, so. but you guys are missing out on one key thing is what? though the fact that I've already spent so much time with you. So. 
the fact if I've already spent months with you, mm-hmm. right? Everything is kosher. Everything right. is cool. And then when the it comes to sex, sex, and then I find this out that you smell, and, and I say to you, look, what are you saying? I like verbatim. Tell me what you're saying. To I'm you. like, look, honestly, when we went to go have sex, I wasn't a fan of the smell. And I'll explain, like, I don't know if it was something off with the day, if this is a regular occurrence, if you've been told this before, but I really was not a fan of it. And then at that point, they're either going to tell so me... you want to see me anymore? No. And then at that point, they're going to tell me if this is something that they know is a known issue, mm-hmm. if this has occurred to them before with other men, and then at that point, it's in their court. Like, they have to tell me, because... How are they t- how are they supposed to know? What if they've been moving their entire life not knowing that this is a real okay, issue? Okay, because but, no but, them. but in that case and in my case, he does know because how? he sees it. Okay, but okay, but you guys are not listening to when I say that people are truly delusional. Because Ryan, I agree with you. Men's watch porn; they know what a big dick. Yeah, most of the time, if we're being honest. When we watch porn, we see, like, humongous dicks. Like, these dicks aren't real, but yeah. those dicks are huge, right. right? They're not average man dicks. This <laughs> man who has a tiny penis, he knows by comparison, his penis is small compared to that. Right. But the problem is some people in this world move in such a way that they truthfully don't know things until mm. they are told, mm. right? He may have already slept with a woman before, and the sex might have been good, which could have given him the confidence to be like, yo, maybe my penis isn't that it's small. Bad. Okay. Yeah. Is it that bad? So sometimes you need to tell people certain things so they understand what they are working with so then they can try and adjust moving forward. So which is why I say to this dude, the problem with him is like, what where he lost me was how he started acting afterwards, yes. mm-hmm. right? I'm imagining a scenario where this you could tell someone like that who has a small penis, and this is them acting sensibly afterwards, right? But he didn't do that. Mm-hmm. He started acting crazy. He showed up at your work. Mm-hmm. He did all these crazy so what, things. Mm-hmm. What's stopping him from saying, that's just Kathleen that thinks that? And that's why I said, that, then he's not sensible. Because mm-hmm. look, Kathleen will be the first person, let's say she's the first person mm-hmm. to tell him. He's like, he's like fuck Kathleen. Fuck that. He's like, he's like fuck that. She's just, mm-hmm. she's just crazy. Yeah. But then you start noticing things become a pattern, right? Mm. One time it's maybe an accident. Mm. Two times it's a coincidence. Three times it's a pattern, Mm. right? And this is the thing. People move certain ways because they don't get told certain things. It's no different than the conversation where I said, like, things that I would do for, like, X girl, Y girl, I would do to Z girl. Mm. But, like, she doesn't, like... I might not know that she doesn't like it because she doesn't tell me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you need to have a communication with certain things. So I understand when it comes to like stench and like size of dick. We feel like it's really not our place to say these things because we're never going to see these people again. We're like, fuck it. I'm not going to see you again. So Why why crush them too? What do I care? I'm just coming from a place where it's like, look, I still know I'm never going to fuck or see you again. But hopefully they can help you. But I'm telling you this because look. I at least care enough about you to say for the look, next person. For the next person yeah. you try to see, mm-hmm. I hope it works out yeah. for you. Because look, if I meet a girl who has a stained pussy, like I don't want her to not get dick for the rest of her life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I want her to at least get dick at some point. I mean, I don't really care for it. Right? Like I'm not saying like I wish, <laughs> yeah. but I don't want her to go the rest of her life with mm. no dick. You know? Okay. No, I I admit that I could have done it differently. And I should have done it differently in a sense of where maybe it could have it could have prevented certain things in terms of him like acting that way. But then again, I don't know that just because of the fact that like there's no use in saying what if and all that stuff. Well, here's the thing. I don't think regardless, even if you did tell him, mm-hmm. I I still think this guy might have acted the same way. Mm-hmm. Or worse. Or worse. Because you just don't know how people work. You, 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 you have yeah. no idea. You, you honestly never know. Yeah. Right. But I just think. People know things based on, like, past experiences and patterns, right? Mm-hmm. Which is why that same episode with Ebony, when she said, I remember, she's like, what would you do if a girl looked at you and said, you know, your dick is small? This never happened to me. That's, That's exactly what you did. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> and the reason, the, yeah. the whole reason I truthfully would react yeah. that way is because no woman I've yeah. ever been with has, like, ever told me. Like, yeah. Not just not told me, but, like, Complained you know by or, based yeah. on indications. Mm-hmm. If someone says that, you have to be like, so you're trying to hurt me. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work. You know? Like, <laughs> like if someone, you think it's small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. If someone said that to me, I'm Get literally going to go back in my Rolodex and mm-hmm. my mind and think, yo, was there ever a scenario where it was hinted at? No. Mm-hmm. Where it was said? You just have a movie reel of girls screaming and you're like, <laughs> yeah, you're it's like, just, you're being an asshole. You're Get just out. being an asshole. <laughs> like, yeah. So, you know, based on past shit. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, you know, maybe he was with a girl and a girl was faking the entire time. Yeah. You know, like. Could never. These are <laughs> these are things that happen. Like yeah. these things really do happen mm-hmm. and make men feel a certain type of way. It's true. Right? I this is one of the things that I feel extremely conflicted about because of the fact that like I said there's the way I practice certain things is mm-hmm. that there's no there's no reason to be ambiguous. Yeah. But this was one of those things that I just really did not know how to handle. Mm-hmm. And so so this day, like I feel conflicted about it because it goes against my my principles of being straightforward. Yeah, but that I, was the one thing but, that you kind of like, like. I don't know how to do. This. I I didn't know if that was my place <clears throat> or if like you know it's something that goes deeper than that. Because what if it was like a medical thing and then like okay, actually I just have a prime example of this. Right, you asked me like what I was saying in this situation. Right, I remember this one girl. Her and I were like hooking up frequently, and. Sex was good, like everything was good except for one thing. The smell wasn't bad; mm. it was the taste, mm. right? And we've talked about like I like going down on girls, and I'm like really into. It's not like a one-off I thing. Yak, I just so <laughs> like, here's the thing. I like, actually, you know, wait. So here's the thing. I did it. No, with, I okay. went. I went down on her once, and what did it taste like? That's here. Here's the thing. Pussy to me. So it tastes like water. It's just nothing. It doesn't taste like anything. Like, like but this one just it had a should, taste. But it had a taste. Because, oh, it, had, okay. because it had anything. And yeah. that was the problem, right? Like, <laughs> it's like, why did I taste Wait, something? Pussy, did... to me, either tastes like nothing or it tastes... It might sound weird, but it, it'll taste kind of sweet. Mm. Sure. Depending on diet. But yeah. like, mm. but otherwise, it, just tastes, like, otherwise, it yeah. just tastes like nothing majority what? of the time. This time, there was a taste, and all I know is I did not like it. And it, it lingered? It didn't linger. It was just like when I was doing it, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not enjoying this. Right. So <laughs> moving, like, ah. so moving. Was, like was she was she was she clean? Yes. Like this was, about, this was no no was no. But what I'm saying is like was she, she cleaned down than there? What no? But like was she working that day and then she didn't no, get to shower no, or here's, something? Like, here's my th- here's my thing. So everything about this girl had indications that there'd be no issue down yeah. there, mm-hmm. right? Apartment was clean. She worked out often. She ate well. Like everything was okay. Mm-hmm. Then the taste was bad. So every time we had sex after that, I just never went down mm-hmm. on her. Right? And I'm like, cool. She's not saying anything about it. Mm-hmm. Everything's fine. Until one day, she yeah, she's like, why don't like? It's weird. Like how come she don't like go down on me that much? And I was like, listen. <laughs> I was like, if I, I didn't say listen, I said. Okay, if I'm being honest and I don't want to upset you, the first time that I went down on you, like, I don't know if I was doing a good job because I didn't necessarily like the taste. And there was a long pause. And then she's like... Wait, this was in person? Yeah, it was in person. She's like, when was this? And I said, I don't know, it was like maybe like a month ago or whatever, something like that. And she's like, she's like, I don't know, maybe I was like, because she worked at a gym. She's like, yeah. I was like working out a lot that day. Like, I don't know. So I was like, hmm, okay, like maybe. But we, <laughs> nah, probably not. But we, <laughs> but we had that conversation. And I was yeah. like, all, I said to her, all I know is like, I just never experienced a taste before when I go down on girls. I just, and I did this time. I just didn't like it. <laughs> the thing is though, she didn't, it was weird. She didn't take it like badly. Hmm. And it didn't lead into a stigma afterwards. But it was funny did because it, again, Okay, so the next time I went to go have sex, there was like this moment where you, the moment where <laughs> fellatio usually happens, yeah. like me going down, right before that moment came, it was like, okay, am I doing, am I doing this? And after we had the <laughs> conversation, it's like so, preparing yourself. It's like so, what's going so, on right now? <laughs> so I did it, and there was no taste, right? It was nothing. So it might have just been like an off that day. Was something. she on medication? I don't, like, I don't know. We, we honestly don't know. She could have been on medication by then. All I know is if I never have that conversation with her, I would have 
just went my next amount of time bro, thinking, yo, this dude, girl has stink pussy. Felt... Listen, bro, this, that's a rare one-off, first of all. I know. Because that's, come on. Any, that's a fucking rare ass. <laughs> come on, one, that's a rare ass one. But all, all yeah. that, but all that taught me was like, look, all, it's no, not the that, worst all, if listen, you have a conversation. All that taught you is that now you think talking about this shit works out. That's all that did. That's that's all it did. What? That, that because that one off basically said, see, all I had to do was talk. And yeah. Justin was made and she tastes good now. No, that, <laughs> that's not real life. How's that not real life? Because. Because, because you don't even because, know exactly. how, how like, why it tasted that way in the just, first place. I don't need to know. No, I just need to tell her know, the truth I know, and then keep it moving. Okay, okay, I see. And I agree I know, with you. I don't need to know. I just no, need to tell her the but truth. But this and one, she can resolve the issue I mean, privately. This, That's all I need to know. But this one-off situation has now given you confidence in this method. That if I talk, there'll be a solution. Someone will come from it. Which What what do I care? What do I care? If I, if but, I have the confidence to say... This is what happens, yeah. and someone feels a type of way about it. That's no sweat off my back. I can keep it moving, but I should. I don't want to. I don't want to live in a world where, honestly, if I'm really into you, yeah. I can't tell you why. I can't tell you why. That's the thing. I don't want to live in that world where, if I'm into you, I can't tell you why. Mm. If I'm into you, I can't tell you. Listen, when you give head, it sucks. Like I can't tell you That's these things. I like I, those are things that can be improved. Like okay, any, anything that if anything I'm into with, you, anything if, with a skill or if, a talent. If or I'm a, into you, I can't tell you that. Look, sometimes like some something's going on here. Some your pussy seems to be smelling. <laughs> like what's going on? <laughs> okay, here's here's an example. If you don't like, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna talk about grooming, aren't you? No, 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 oh, okay. not even go there. So, <laughs> I I hate bad feet. Okay. Now, <laughs> I know why he's bad feet. I remember this episode so, now, perfectly. If you're, if you, I don't know if, well, you might not care about feet as much, but let's say, <laughs> let, let's say someone cares about feet a lot. Yeah. Right? And everything else is perfect on the girl, whatever. And, but the girl's feet oh, are gosh. so bad yeah. that it generally like turns them off. Right? Like my feet are so bad. Or her the, feet. The girl's, the, the yeah, girl, the girl's feet or so side, bad. Yeah. Or the guy's feet for the woman, whatever. If she's a into feet and whatever. If the partner's feet or the person that's fucking their feet are really, really bad. To the point that it's like, once they see it, they're just like, I just can't. can't. That's, that's, that's a right? turn off for you. Like a, like a major, major turn off. It's. Is it's, it a deal it's, breaker? Like it's to the point where it's it's, it's, up, a, it's, it's up there. Breaker? But here's the thing it's with, up there. with like, Ryan, it's to, it's it's to the point where it's like, you know how we talk about there are things you can't change, mm-hmm. like there's nothing you can mm-hmm. do about it. It's mm-hmm. like that with him, because like and someone's someone's second toe could be bigger than their big toe, and Ryan hates that. But the like, thing is, do you like that's how that's do you not, say that? You don't. Like, what am I supposed to tell you? <laughs> what am I supposed to tell you? What am I supposed to tell you? Listen. You you know what you say? You say look. I have a weird fe- fetish when it comes to feet. And honestly, I don't like your feet. So, yeah. so we're done? It bothers you enough? I have to, I have to come up with something else. I have to come up with something better than that. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you. Wow. Because those so men's, can't be, men's are honest nowadays, listen, eh? Listen, not talking wow. about honesty. Right? Do you not, have a deal breaker? This is not about honesty. Do I? The reason it's not about honesty is because, listen. How's it not about honesty? Because <laughs> men... <laughs> This man said, "I have to, th- I have to lie. I, I have to think lie. about something. I didn't say lie. I said I have to come up with something He's better than that." He's gonna omit. I said no, up. no. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Rewind it. I said I have to come up with something up. better than that. That's what I said. No, I have to come up with something better because than that. you, you have to come up with something better because I'm, you're lying. No, <laughs> you are lying. You, you, I'm, not, I'm not lying. I'm saying that is not enough. I need more. I need more ammo. No, I need to come up with something. Why? Else. Because no, why? Right, because no, no. I the reason why that's problematic is because. You will you will force yourself to think about something worse <laughs> that was never there, bro. Because all it comes down to is your foot. That's all it comes down but to. I need more. So all can you have she to do wear is... socks? What did she say? Every time we fight, I will wear socks. But now I'm like, she's wearing <laughs> socks. <laughs> I know why you wearing socks. And then that's just throwing me off. What Listen. if she wore socks the whole time? And like you've never seen her feet and you're like really in deep. That would crush Ryan. You would need to know. Right. What if, what if, like... The, that would... Okay, like, in a situation with... That would with, fuck me up. In your situation, for example, where you mm. and you and Jamie were, were like... Yeah. Because you and Rhonda already had a relationship prior yeah. to Yeah. So, in, in your situation, right? This was your situation where you guys were long distance, and then you only saw each other partially. Yeah. And then, um... 
like a couple of days at a time and then she comes and moves here hmm. because you guys are committed hmm. she yeah. comes and moves here and you see her feet for the first time what do you what are you, what are you gonna do <laughs> look i know right i know right <laughs> Ryan's gonna think of something else. Something else break I'm up. telling you, something else. I would Even when you have the house and like the apartment and everything. <laughs> oh my god! I don't give a fuck. What? <laughs> what does that mean? Her feet? Listen. At what, the very- what, is the, what is the point of a relationship? Mm. Right? To be with someone for a long time, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully your life partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got it. Are you scared that it's going to pass on to your children or something? Oh, like, bad for I didn't even go there. <laughs> that's even, that was just... No. <laughs> I didn't even go there. I'm more like, okay, this is this is how I feel. It, it, this can sound shallow, and that's fine if it does. But I'm just a very honest person. Mm. And for me, it's like, mm. I never want, like... No one's perfect. No one's I'm whatever. just a very honest person. I'm gonna think of a lie and tell you. I didn't say a lie. I'm thinking of this. You don't have to say lie. You don't have to say lie, but that's what it is. But go on. Info. But go on. Um. So I'm someone that like if there's we're none of us are perfect, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. the goal is to find someone that's per- perfect for you, mm-hmm. right? And it doesn't mean everyone were flies, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you want to be you want to you want to be happy with everything mm-hmm. on the person you're with. Yeah. Like. Maybe their ass isn't the biggest, but you're happy with their ass. Mm-hmm. Their teeth aren't the biggest, but you're happy with, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, if there's if there's literally a thing on the person that, you can't that literally drives you nuts, <laughs> if, I agree. for you to continually just, like, me, I, mm-hmm. I'm i telling you right now, I'll always, mm-hmm. forever, I'm look like at them. I'm crunching my toes <laughs> because I know it. But, like, it'd be, like, it'd be something that, like, it would ruin a whole bunch of... Like, Are you, like, having would, touching them, too? Like you don't like to touch feet. I don't like if I'm if I'm like I've given, I've given foot massages and mm-hmm. stuff. Like I'll, if there's throb, mm-hmm. if there's laying down whatever I'll mm-hmm. do that here and there. But I'm not. I don't put in my mouth. I'm not like that. Yeah, I don't yeah. have. I don't have a foot fetish. Mm-hmm. It's just I like good feet. If yeah. they look good, cool. Mm-hmm. The rest of you, everything is perfect. Mm-hmm. But the problem is now if I don't like your feet, it's something so specific like that. If you're lay, like if you rub them on me, it's like. Oh, if you put them on my lap, oh, it's on my skin. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's like it's such a conscious thing that's like <clears throat> this is just always you. And then mm-hmm. the problem is like the worst thing is to tell someone you're unhappy with something that they can't change. Mm-hmm. That is the most difficult thing mm-hmm. because it's like what do I what do I tell you? Mm-hmm. Get new feet? Like what do I tell you? Mm-hmm. So I just have to just avoid this thing. What? <laughs> so what? So what? You know because what? Because at the end of the day, you probably don't like that, but there's someone out there that does. That's just a. That's the certain feet. No one's gonna like. <laughs> no, Chris, no, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, stop, no. Ryan, stop. The real look, look, stop. Oh my stop. god, look, stop. I understand. I, I, I understand where you're going and what you're saying, but trust there me. Are certain, I know. There are not, people that love feet. It's right. not even just feet. Yeah. There are people that will like will worship. Pay. Will worship yeah. someone, and overlook certain things. Yeah. Whereas. People like you yeah. and I might not do that. Mm-hmm. They can get past, yeah. Then get past that. Do right? you have a deal breaker? Do I have a deal? Oh my god! Like physically, or like something mm-hmm. physically. Mm-hmm. Um, that can be changed or cannot be changed. How can physical be changed? I have a deal breaker. What's something physical that can be changed? Um, armpit hair. Armpit hair. Yeah, like like there are I mean, some, there are some no, no. there are some hair. guys that that. Like shave their armpit hair, mm. and I'm I'm not with that. I know, but yeah. that, that's not anything with anything with hair that can mm. be customizable. Like, what's mm. something physical that cannot be changed? Like, hair is customizable. Like mm. piercings, like take, like those are hair. Anything can be hair can mm. be changed mm. anytime, anytime. What's my deal breaker? Like um, what that the, that cannot be changed. Like things that cannot be changed are things such as no lips. Are they like, then a micro penis? I'm sorry? Other than a micro uh, Well, that's, well that's a no, but, but that's the thing. Like, lips can be changed, though. I mean, ugh. yeah, sure, if you want to get fake stuff. But, I mean, if no one has that money for real, like, fa- like you have... If you like, have for, you me, have sm- for me, it's an ass. You have small lips. I honestly, th- I honestly think, I honestly think it's a, like, a deal no breaker bum. if you have no like, bum. No bum. Mm. I really believe, I really feel that way. For me, it's, um like, I don't have a racial type, but I have a preference for height. And I was going to say, I'm a racial type, but I like big black dick. <laughs> I really <laughs> thought... Wow! Like, the way wow! she said... Like, I don't have a thing for racial, like, type or anything, but I just like black dick. Like, yeah. I thought that's... Yeah, I thought like that's what yeah because, because, like, race race is something, obviously, that you can't change. The, like, yeah. Okay, right. So, like, I don't have a racial type, right. but yeah. I have a preference for height, and I have a yeah. preference for muscle. Yeah. So, in terms of, like, 
I'm obviously there are some people that that I've been so attracted to mentally and mm. intellectually mm. that I've overlooked certain things that 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 you want. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it's not like I wasn't attracted to them, right. mm. but I would have been more attracted to them had they had certain yeah certain aspects right. like like height is a very very big thing. So five seven you can't do. Um, the shortest guy I dated was five eleven. So five seven you can't wow. do. Wow. I can. I five four. How I'm tall five are you? Four. I'm yeah. five four. So five four you can't do. I asked how tall you were. Five four can he you do? He how. Um no. Five five. No. That's an inch taller than her, bro. But like, she can't What's wear the heels? minimum that you would be like? Five eleven. No, not the minimum you did. The minimum five eleven. That's oh, that's also five, the minimum yeah. that you will do. Yeah, but like, like, like I said, there are ones that like I have, I have um, pursued. Yeah. But like, the intellectual connection mm. just could not be overlooked, and it was as simple as that. Mm. But like, and those are the types of connections that you can't really find elsewhere. Mm. But you, when you have certain preferences that's what you automatically are drawn to yeah. so it's not as if like you go out of your way to have an intellectual no, conversation no, with everyone mm. but when you see someone that has your preferences right. that's open, someone that that's someone that, 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 that yeah. you look that you look now at, i hope right? you have yeah. this as well exactly yeah, so that's okay. just that's just how it is for me at least there there's like the the muscle thing mm. is, is, is a big thing for me too because i can't i i really cannot fathom like if if there's if there's ever a time where i need to like ask my boyfriend for for clothes mm. Mm. and they fit me like yeah that's mm. that's kind of like 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 a fear for me like, like I you don't, want you want baggy and big shit. yeah mm. like i can't like if yeah. if if it's tight <laughs> can on i wear me, a hoodie it's actually it's it's a little small if it's <laughs> tight on me yeah. then i like that's that's turn off for yeah me. it's like if i wanted my hoodie i would just get mine yeah, I wanted I wanted your <laughs> like, I didn't want one that's like like mine. Like that's oh my God. that's kind of why I asked for yours. That's crazy. I'll just get my own hoodie. No worries. <laughs> See, I was trying to remember what we, there was one topic we were talking about earlier, like the whole. It's, it kind of relates to the courtship, mm. but I just I I don't know. Like I always feel like you know, I feel like you know, like pretty early, like. Like almost right away, if you're gonna date someone or not. Absolutely, absolutely. Like I've, I've never been in a situation where I said to myself, "Okay, like uh, I'm not too sure about her right now," and then I ended up dating her. Like I, yeah. oh, like like grew into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. I've never just grown. No. Into, mm-hmm. I've no. heard people do that, and like all the power yeah, to yeah. them. But like, no, that just not for me. No, I feel like like it goes back to. Sorry to cut you off, but mm-hmm. it goes back to like I said. Um, knowing what your intentions are, right? Yeah. Because there are, like you said, there are some people that you know, like, pretty much right away. But it's, it's, it's you have to think about whether or not um, you know what you can offer. Yeah. Someone you know what you can provide. And, but the question is, like, are you ready and willing to provide those things mm. in, that, in that certain time? Because mm. there, there are some people that, that you meet that you know they would be a great person to, to start a partnership with. Yeah. But... You also have to know whether you are. There are so many factors of going into a relationship that should be taken into account. Like, are you mentally prepared for it? Are you emotionally mm. prepared for it? Those types of things. Yeah. And if you're not, then that's when you can kind of maybe even consider growing into it per se in in yeah. that in that gradual transition. Mm. But you need to know whether or not being ready and being willing yeah. are two different things. Yeah. So in in that sense, it's very important to know the that's difference. Very, yeah, that's very true. Hmm. I think we learned a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm we still did. lying about the whole feet thing, bro. Like, <laughs> Listen, man, you stood it's, up. It's it's tough. I've always known about it. Like, I don't mm. think. Look, I that's the thing. I don't think it's a problem. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, like, what's the problem? Like that particular thing that you don't like. Yeah. But the problem is, it's like you. I feel like you can't, and this is me saying this as a guy that that's not my issue, but I feel like you can't just say that to someone off the jump and be like, look, I need to see the feet. I can't. You can't just say that, though. You know what I mean? It's just a risk. And it's that's, something that you peek at. Like, you know? No, I, like, <laughs> you're, you're doing everything you can to try and see the feet, 
mm-hmm. without directly saying, let mm-hmm. me see the feet. Mm-hmm. That's why it's the Go best. Swimming. To, that's why it's the best to meet people in the summertime. I was going to say, it's worse for me. <laughs> but summertime, yeah. like, yeah, your sandals are out. I'm like, first convo, I'm like, yo, what's up? It's good. And I'm mm-hmm. glancing. Like, my my problem, I can say this is an actual problem, <laughs> is I, I know this everything. Yeah. Mm. Like, highly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, to the point, like, and it's the same thing with my work, too. Like, mm. There's certain my work, my writing, like I'm, I just notice everything so highly mm-hmm. that I, I don't physically, physical, visual, like visually, I should mm-hmm. say, not just okay. physical, but I just visually notice everything, like my surroundings, just mm-hmm. people, things. When I'm talking to someone, like I'm just, I'm just always analyzing. Mm-hmm. That's just how I am. Yeah. And because of that, like, it's made me a great, you know, artist mm-hmm. and creative because I'm, I'm. I pay, I'm so meticulous mm-hmm. and I pay attention to detail like like so mm-hmm. like keenly mm-hmm. but when it comes to relationships and and you know meeting people and talking to girls and whatever it's a setback to an extent because sometimes I'm like if a whole bunch of things are great I'm like <clears> oh this is sick <throat> and I notice something mm-hmm. I'm stuck mm. like and it's so like it's it's like fuck <laughs> like yeah, like because yeah, yeah. I'm like I can't I wish I never booked it. Like, but see, like, part of that, like, be honest, like, part of that, do you think that's, like, uh, a blessing and a curse with you? Yeah. Because I feel like there would definitely be some women, or even if flip side, right, mm-hmm. where, you know, that could really upset some people, where they're just like, yo, you are so, like, anal with everything that... How am I supposed to be perfect? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, but, the but same it's not perfect. And I think th- I think that's I think that's where the, the I guess discrepancy lies mm-hmm. when people are trying to communicate with me mm-hmm. is that they view my an- analysis, they mm-hmm. view it as me deeming perfection and looking for per- mm-hmm. perfection. Yeah, it's not. It's it's hard to explain because it's not perf- I'm not looking for. It's perfect. like you it's, said no, but it's there's there's a difference between perfect by by a perfection standard and yeah. perfect for you. Yeah. You know exactly, and, yeah. and that's we, that's what it is. Like like you said, mm. if it's perfect for someone else, it may not be perfect for you, and vice versa. Right. And a lot of the times, people people will say, okay, but what if Rhonda had this, or what if mm. Jamie had this? Then they're not perfect for you because that's that's the one thing yeah. that that like you said, you can't stand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And a lot of the times, when someone's perfect for you, mm. everything about them, even the things that you didn't see coming, they they're still things that that you you never thought you would like, hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. A lot, so. a lot, I'm, and I actually like when things surprise me mm-hmm. because you set these expectations for yourself, mm-hmm. these ex- expectations for other people and when they meet them, you're like, okay, they met them but when they, there's other things, you're like, oh, I didn't really want or was looking for this mm-hmm. but you also do that. Mm-hmm. I think that's what, you know, grows the bonds and relationships yeah. and what you're like, yeah, we're but, like, but that's why I was saying earlier, like, I've never, uh, grown into a relationship where I did I felt off about someone. No, you've it's, already been in it, and it just it, becomes it, additional. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah. either I've been in it, it becomes Definitely. additional, or you just kind of fall into a relationship. Yeah, I agree. We just, it just everything just happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, can I, don't can know. I ask something about that too? Like yeah. In terms of something happens, mm-hmm. um, there are there are certain I would say lifestyle practices yeah. that people have, um, in terms of the way that they live their life. Yeah. Right and. Coming as two different individuals, you're gonna have your differences. Yeah. And so, um, is there like an indifference that that you have that you feel like you cannot outlook? Like, if if there's something that someone practices within their lifestyle, yeah, that you don't agree with, is like give it, me an example. Like, for example, like um, within my relationship, for example, um, the difference between me and my boyfriend hmm. is that. Once I come out of a relationship, he, like, for me, once I come out of a relationship, there's no platonic relationships, friendships pursued after that. Mm -hmm. Like, once I've tried everything. Like an ex you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Like, once I've tried everything in terms of trying to stay with you, and that didn't work out, I don't want you in my life. It's straight to nothing. Yeah, I don't want you in my life. Um, For him, he pursues friendships after the fact. Mm. And that was something. Friendships. Yeah, and that was something that. Um, was that, tough for you. No, that was something that that we had we had talked about oh, okay. from the beginning, right? And and I had explained to him like we we had picked each other's minds about it, and um, he's, 
like I said, the, the friendships are platonic. But then for me, with the way I view that, yeah, there's no such thing as a platonic friendship like, after a romantic fuck, relationship, fuck, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And um, and he views it differently. Mm-hmm. And that was that was a lifestyle choice that that he practiced that I knew was was something that he had in his life going into a relationship. Yeah, and you had to be okay with right? it or not, basically. Yeah, no, it was it was something that I was um I made an effort, a conscious effort to to see if it was something that I was okay with. Hmm. Right? Um and I learned that that wasn't something that I was okay with and he adjusted to that. Yeah. Right? But is there something that you guys in terms <coughs> of lifestyle choice that you don't that you don't agree with? Because that's for me, like uh like Friendships after after mm, okay. a relationship. That's a that's a lifestyle choice that I don't agree with. Um, I feel like it's a very flawed practice. Yeah, personally. like I think. Look, funny enough, one of the questions we don't have to get into full things. We're already so far in. Hang with an ex while in a relationship possible. Straight up, I don't think it is. Um, I mean, look, I don't think it's possible to do it when it's just one-on-one mm-hmm. right and i say that only because whether or not let's say i say you and i like we had a relationship now you're my mm-hmm. ex um whether or not we can just hang out one-on-one and it's fine it might not be fine for my partner mm-hmm. it might not be fine for someone else yeah. therefore it causes problems therefore is it possible it, no Unless I like, if I don't want it to be possible, then no. Mm-hmm. Um, the main reason I don't think it's possible is because I feel like, for me, quite simply put, like once I have sex with you, mm-hmm. I feel like there's always going to be some sort of dynamic there. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know, like I, I, I just feel that way because, and <clears throat> I say that because, uh, you know, I, I know this from pat personal experience. Mm-hmm. Like I was in a, in a relationship we became we broke up years later we hooked up again mm-hmm. right because that dynamic was like there it's, it's naturally like i don't have to try you and i don't have to try court each other again mm-hmm. to have sex yeah if we want to if that's all we want mm-hmm. we know look we've done it already let's just do it let's just do it again mm-hmm. so there's i think I'm just that, coming back home <laughs> yeah like no, ma- no matter yeah no matter how much i for example no matter how much i may dislike an ex mm-hmm. or like it could have ended poorly mm-hmm. there's always still gonna be like that idea of, mm-hmm. look we could still have sex mm-hmm. like that could happen yeah so and because of that if i'm gonna be a sensible person i'm respectful to whoever it is that i'm dating i don't want to put myself in a position where i'm it's just gonna be me and my ex mm-hmm. i think it's i think it's possible to be in the same room or like be in a scenario where your ex is there if you're around a bunch of people. So it's almost like the situation is being mitigated. Mm -hmm. But I'm not looking to put myself in a situation with my ex being present. Mm. Yeah, I I agree from most of what you're saying as well. Like, you once you fuck, you can't go back to holding hands. Mm -hmm. Like, it it doesn't make sense. It's like, especially because sex is, it's such a process to get to that point, Mm -hmm. whether it happens early or not. Mm -hmm. But the process to get to that point is like, I really like you, like, way up here at this level mm-hmm. that you're letting me go inside of you. Mm-hmm. I'm letting you be on me. We're together we're having this moment, whether it's just a quick fuck or whether mm-hmm. it's making love or whatever. It's a union. We're, we're yeah. having this moment right now. This is not a moment you have with every single person on the street. That's mm-hmm. just... Yeah. yeah. I've had this moment with you. Mm-hmm. Where, no matter how people meet in this world, back and forth, if I bump shoulders with you, you're like... And we, it's not something you can take back. It's, yeah. you, you know, if, no matter, you can't you can't say, "Oh, it was just the tip." No, <laughs> like, no you matter know? what, no matter what happens in this world, where path you guys meet, mm-hmm. if you guys see each other again, you're like, "We fucked at some point." Mm-hmm. Like that's not the thing. Like, mm-hmm. did, did we? Have sex? I've been inside that's you. Not, you've been yeah. inside me. It'll never know? be a thing. Like, did we ever have sex? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. there's a point we both have sex, and mm-hmm. you kind of just un unwritten, unsaid thing. Yeah. We just kind of just like, nice to see you. Yeah, you too. And you're both just like. That was either great sex or bad sex, yeah. but that was the one, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it doesn't go away. Now, the part where I differ is because my personal situation is I know a lot of girls, mm-hmm. a lot of different women that I've either just been been around or been with or actually dated. Mm-hmm. Those of which happen to be in very similar circles as me. Mm-hmm. So 
there are some situations where I can't actually That's get out of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think the issue isn't isn't about whether you're not in the same scenario, same area of them. It's mm. whether you're making an effort to to That's go. That's exactly what like, it is. Yeah. Let's yeah. like let's chill. Yeah. Like, exactly. That, yeah. Why? Like mm-hmm. that's we're not chilling. If oh you're going to that event yeah. too? Oh cool, nice to see you. Yeah. That's my ex girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, she's she's here. Like mm-hmm. oh I saw you. What that can talk mm-hmm. or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's not plan. Yeah. Let's oh let's have let's, lunch. Oh, let, let, let's have dinner. No, like, yeah. like, like that. Yeah. But there's certain situations where it's like. Listen, if we've dated for a long enough period of time mm-hmm. and we're from the same area, mm-hmm. we know the same people. Yeah. I can't run from you. Like, yeah. you, sure. if, if I don't invite you, they did. Like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to be like, don't invite my ex. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, we're adults. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that's a situation where it's like, okay, you have to know how to handle yourself in a situation like that because it's like, listen, I may or may not bump into this person, but I'm not making active plans mm-hmm. to have private yeah. meetups with my ex girlfriend. Yeah. Like, no, that's not my friend to be like, no, we're mm-hmm. just chilling. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, remember the last time we fucked? Oh, yeah, I know. That was yeah. that. So how about your girlfriend? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, seriously? That's, that's not, because you know the I mean? thing is, like, once you see that person, you will always it, know it, what they look like naked. It comes like, back. Yeah. Period. It, it comes, whether it's conscious or not, period. it's there. It's I, there. And it's something put that... It, put it like this. That, like, you, not only do you know what they look like naked, you know... Ex- how they ex- feel. You know exactly what to do. Yeah, to like, mm-hmm. I don't feel good. I know how to yeah, beat. Yeah. I know how to beat you. I know how to beat the game. No matter how. <laughs> like, no, I can. I can beat the game. At any given point, if I say let's go, you're gonna go. Bro, it's a hundred percent. That's it's hundred percent. I know the cheat. Mm-hmm. I know the cheat code. Mm-hmm. I know the code to you. But let. But how about some uh, some tea? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> let's play this. Game. Let's stop playing this game. Yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, you got, you got. Oh, well, you had some questions throughout. But if you have any actually like, specific questions you want to ask us, or we can wrap up now if you're good. I have. A question sure. and I have a request. Go okay. for it. Um, which do I do first? Anyone? Uh, either. Um, the question is: um, Do you think there's such a thing as a mandatory relationship? Mandatory, what like you, you like, like an arranged marriage? No, 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 no. Yeah. Like I mean it in a sense of whether it's not necessarily a romantic mm-hmm. relationship, but let's say for example, like like family mm-hmm. or or friendships. Oh, okay. Like, like um, there are some there are some relationships that you're born into. Right or or that, oh, okay. that that you've formed throughout your whole life. Yeah. Do you feel like, and I guess it's a two parter where, um, do you feel like, how do you feel about obligations? In, okay. In that sense. I, I I feel like, just like snap judgment thinking about this. I feel like relationships are. I think everyone has a met like mandatory relationships up until a certain age in their life mm-hmm. where they're able to really make the decisions for themselves like who i can and who i am going to talk to how they're distributing their time Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because like i think of my my parents for example um my mom and dad like my mom and dad are two two very different people my dad is very book smart Mm -hmm. like went to oxford got Mm -hmm. two masters like he's a very book smart dude Mm -hmm. my mom is like kind of like a hippie like she's the complete opposite of him Mm -hmm. so but my relationship with my parents has always been, like, very weird. So my mom I'm cool with. My dad I'm not as cool with in a sense that sometimes, uh, like, I used to get told when I was younger, like, oh, man, like, you're just like your dad. And I would hate mm. that. Oh, really? Because, like, my dad would, like, piss me off. Like, mm. he, would, he would make, he would piss me off. So I'm just like, why do I want to be like this mm-hmm, dude? Like, mm-hmm. don't, don't equate me to this yeah. guy, right? So now that I'm at a certain point in my life... I wouldn't say that I've disassociated myself from my dad, Mm -hmm. but what I've seen is that, like, the way that our relationship is now is very different to when I was, like, living at home all the time because Mm -hmm. I had to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I had no other choice. So, yeah, I do think some relationships are mandatory, but then everyone has a choice at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, From a relationship standpoint... I definitely, there have been times where, you know, I think about me being in a relationship and an ex saying, like, I don't like that you're friends with so-and-so. Like, I don't like, I don't like your friend, this girl. Like That's that's your girlfriend saying that to you? Look, my girlfriend saying mm-hmm. this to me. I don't like this girl. That's your friend. That I've known before her, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before my girlfriend. Have you ever been in a situation like mm-hmm. that? And I've, have, I've been that know, friend. And it's funny because, you know, it's fair to say that that relationship with that friend Mm -hmm. isn't mandatory, Mm -hmm. 
But in that moment, so I need pistol court. In that moment, you, I really felt I in those moments I felt like that was a mandatory relationship mm-hmm. because I'm like, why am I having to choose between my girlfriend and this friend that like I know? Com- you're not even comparable. Yeah, we're not, it's not. It's not this or that. It's not yeah. this or that. They're two different lanes. Right. Yeah. That's so, why. but it's like you know, but I be, but I relationships should, make those situations yeah. this or that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and that's I, what that's where the fights come. Yeah, because and I like, treat yeah. I treat that person. And in that moment, as a mandatory relationship. And mm-hmm. sometimes they, my partner might look at it that way, too. Because they're like, why are you holding on to this person so mm-hmm. much? Like, But it's like, I've known them for longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I have this relationship built up with them. So, For yeah. whatever reason, that is. Mm-hmm. For whatever yeah. reason. So, yeah, I do think, I do believe in mandatory relationships, to answer mm-hmm. your question. I just also believe at the same time that literally that's open for interpretation. Like, mm-hmm. anyone falls within that category. It could be... Your brother, sister, yeah. father, mother, cousins, friends. Everyone is a mandatory, yeah. you know? Because I can decide... Like, Ryan could decide to tomorrow that, like, I'm cut. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And just because we've been doing this for X amount of time, it doesn't mean that, like, anyone is going to be permanent. Mm-hmm. Which just, is where the whole transition of obligation comes into play. Yeah. Like, because, oh, we've been doing this for so long, so I have to make an effort to, to try. To but you, it and, and, the, and the thing is, I feel like... I feel like more people need to understand, like learn, like you need to choose, like pick your battles and understand that sometimes you shouldn't burn bridges that you may need to cross later on. Mm-hmm. So I found that like when I was working, I may not like someone mm-hmm. or so-and-so may not like that I'm a friend of someone, but mm-hmm. it's because by obligation, I have to be involved with this. Yeah. But as soon as I'm in a position where I don't have to, I just choose not to. Mm-hmm. But I think it's kind of unfair when someone says to you like, why are you friends with this person? Or they make it an issue mm-hmm. without understanding the position you're, you're in. you're looking at my feet. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Without, without understanding the position you're in. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's just my take on it. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. What my take? Yes. Um, I, I, a lot of the things he says is, I, I definitely can mirror a lot of it. Um, the only part I'd probably adjust, if anything, for me is that, um, I don't think, I believe all, I believe everyone should be held accountable, whether you're, you're friends, family, mm-hmm. or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, mm-hmm. to the sense that it, I don't, I don't hold, like, I, I won't take disrespect from, you know, a family member and be okay with it because they're my family member. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm not someone that's like, well, it's, it's, well, no, I know what you mean, but like, for me, like, mm-hmm. I don't like. I'm very close to my cousins, mm-hmm. for example, right? Mm-hmm. And there's there's joking and there's, you know, playing around, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then there's literal disrespect where they're affecting your life mm-hmm. and affecting your finances, affecting mm-hmm. your happiness, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I don't have to keep, you know, investing time and, and, and giving you my attention because you're my cousin mm-hmm. or because you're my, even your father, for example. Mm-hmm. Like, people people give our parents and family members such a bly mm-hmm. because it's like, it's family, so... Family can ruin you the, even worse than some of your friends. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's Great. and we give them so much yeah. power that's like it's my, but it's my mom. It's like mm-hmm. your mom's fucking you. Mm-hmm. Like you notice that? Like yeah, yeah. you have to be able to shut that off. That it's mm-hmm. it's my mom. Like yeah, it is your mother. But you have to acknowledge when someone's ta- like just like anyone, we're all people. Mm-hmm. We all have our advantages. Mm-hmm. We all have our needs. Our 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 vices are take. I mean, take advantage. Of. People are are selfish. Mm-hmm. They're still human, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they're your father, your brother, your sister, whatever, but they can still screw you over very badly. Mm -hmm. One, knowingly. Two, not knowingly. And three, sometimes they'll even care. Mm -hmm. And they they are aware that because I'm her father or his Mm -hmm. brother, he's not going to do anything or she's not going to do anything, so Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep doing this. And the more you allow it to to happen, it's it's almost like you you start to give them such a long rope, Mm -hmm. and then you give friends... Who you may have known for less, mm-hmm. but treat you so much better, and you give them such a short rope because they're your friends, yeah. mm-hmm. and that, that is where mm-hmm. I feel like people need to understand this: like your best friend could be way better for you than your own brother or sister mm-hmm. because of what they actually do for your life, mm-hmm. yeah. not because they're your friend. That you're like, well, my si- it's my sister, and you're my friend, so you gotta go because that's my sister. It's like, mm-hmm. what what is that? Like, it's your sister, yeah, mm-hmm. by blood, by mm-hmm. raising, whatever, but. 
but that's not it's not good for you. It's not a healthy relationship for you. Mm-hmm. So I don't. That's why I don't believe in mandatory in that for that specific question. I don't believe in mandatory relationships because I feel the only mandatory relationships we really have that we are very bold about mm-hmm. is family. Yeah. Because I feel like that's something that's like this is my mom. This is what it is. This is my dad. This is what it is. My sister. My sibling. Like. They just are just there. Like, yeah. regardless of what happens, like, I can hate her, mm-hmm. but it's my mom. But we just do that. Like, mm-hmm. societal, society makes us just, but it's your mom. Like, she raised you. Like, mm-hmm. she's fucking you over. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter if she raised Like, yeah, she raised you. And now she's doing a terrible job of, mm-hmm. of helping you succeed mm-hmm. from this point. You know what I'm saying? Um, but then when it comes to, you know, relationships, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest faults are people in relationships that are like, I can't break up because you've gone through so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, agree. That is one of the top mm-hmm. three faults that are existing right now in relationships Absolutely. that people don't leave unhealthy, toxic shit mm-hmm. because they're like, we've been through mm-hmm. so much. Yeah. And so many times I've talked, I've, I've said this to probably almost every one of my girlfriends. I don't know how this conversation always comes up, but maybe because of my personality, maybe because of how I think, mm-hmm. it comes off harshly, mm-hmm. but I... I've said it to every single girlfriend. Mm. And it's the fact that I could love you. Mm. This is way more than love. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, like, I feel like a lot of women misinterpret, like, because he loves me, that he should do. Or because he loves me, that this should happen. Or but because it's not he, enough. It's, it's not enough. Mm-hmm. And that's something I always reiterate mm-hmm. because I'm like, don't think because I love you that I'm okay with this mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. And don't think because I love you that I can't end this shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I can love you and still say you're not good. Mm-hmm. I could say I love someone and still be like, I love you so much, but I'm still ending this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people think in the reverse is like, I can't end it because I love them. And a lot you know of people say? say, well, if you love me, why do you want to end it? You know? And that's... That's, <laughs> a, that is, that is the stupidest yeah. thing yeah. people can say yeah. because I've, I've heard it time and time mm-hmm. again. And like... I only say it as a personal example. It's not just me saying shit, but, like, mm-hmm. I've heard it time and time again that if you love me, then you would work harder. Or if mm-hmm. you love me, then you would fight through mm-hmm. this. Like, it's not an if-then-this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, love is not an if-then-therefore. Like, it's, yeah. that is not how this works. Mm-hmm. It's Love is something that comes on its own. It mm-hmm. comes very naturally. It comes from all other aspects, mm-hmm. much bigger than just how we are together and, like, mm-hmm. How much you do for me, how much... It, it's it's an experience and shared mm-hmm. journey together with something that builds mm-hmm. you to love them. But that's complete independent mm-hmm. towards from someone's... Choice. From, from choice. From mm-hmm. from your happiness, yeah. from progression, from economic... Like, the love I have for you, mm-hmm. you're making me broke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, like... Yeah. I love you, but mm-hmm. you need to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's... Mm-hmm. So, we, ca- we have to stop combining them that's like, well, if you love me, then you should be able to get, like... You can't tell someone what they should be able to get through because of love. Mm-hmm. And you I can't agree. you can't I use agree. that as an umbrella to be yeah. like, well, because you love me, you should be you should accept me like mm-hmm. this. Like I I, sh- I shouldn't mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. Like none of us should mm-hmm. anything. I agree. I should love you. That is something that I should do. Mm-hmm. And even that, I don't necessarily have to do that but because just of, because I do doesn't you know doesn't mean doesn't, I owe you. It's the entitlement yeah. again, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, it's, mm-hmm. and it's 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 a strange form of entitlement because it's like. The worst thing is when someone knows mm. that you love them mm-hmm. and use that now. Uses that again. That's the worst you, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because when someone doesn't know that they love you, if, and I'm sure we all notice this, when you're just dating here and there and it's like, no one really said I love you yet. Mm-hmm. I know I like you a lot. I know you like me a lot. No one really knows mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. who loves each other yet if it's mm-hmm. there yet. People are still very cautious about how they behave. Yeah. Yes. Right? Because they're like, this could end because mm-hmm. I do don't even like is mm. she fully in yeah. I don't know yet so let me let me not go mm. crazy yeah. mm. just in case you know I, I let put, me save this, like, the crazy like, she's yeah. at, she, <laughs> seriously like yeah. she's at yeah. 90% I know she might love me I don't know for sure she's at 90% mm. so let me not do something because mm. that might pull that 90 right down yeah. Yeah. but if I once they know you're at 100 and you actually like mm-hmm. I love you I love you it's mm. like now their ashes become like. Well, they'll have to put up with it because mm. they love me. Yeah. You know that's that's what they think. It's su- it's such a terrible yeah. mindset and a cop out to like to putting in work. Yep. And it's like they basically use. It your... loses its purpose. It does. Yeah. The whole point the whole point of loving someone is not to make my job harder to love you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like 
It's not, oh, because you love me, so now here's all the bullshit that comes yeah, to me. Yeah, You're yeah. still going to love me, right? Right? You still love me, though, right? Mm-hmm. Because you said you love me, so you still do, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's a perfect, you know that's what I'm a saying? perfect way of saying it's it. It's like, so you hid all this mm-hmm. stuff because you weren't sure if I loved you, but mm-hmm. now that I love you, it's like, okay, so listen. It's, like, it's almost like a, so listen, now I know you love me, so <laughs> I'm about to show you all this other bullshit that comes mm-hmm. to me. I didn't want to show you before because I just wasn't sure if you loved me yet. And that's but not fair. At that's, all. that's not fair because it's, I should know who I'm loving. Yeah. However, you know? on the however, to play devil's advocate for a side, there's no way, like, we can't give everyone everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So th- Absolutely, it's, but- that's why it's like a tug of war mm-hmm. between like, you know, you give a little bit, you take a little, you give a little, but it's like, it's just unfortunate that once you do fall in love with a person, mm-hmm. that things are heightened. Mm-hmm. But what has to, what has to be understood is that don't don't be fooled that just because I love you mm-hmm. that we're, you're just in like free for all now. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like oh you know we're in love now yeah. so like now it's free for all. It's like no like there's there's still this constant evaluation. Mm-hmm. It's just like you just got me to a level that's that's very high. Yeah. yeah. However, this is not combined with mm-hmm. you know. Forcing me to entitlement, ex- entitlement or like, I have to accept yeah. certain things, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So, yeah, like for mandatory, like I don't, I don't think anyone is mandatory. I mean, your parents give birth to you, which is great; mm-hmm. they raise you and yada yada. But at any given point, we're all human; we're all people. Your your yeah. mother, father was just one of us, mm-hmm. a fucking kid. You know, I like, had a kid. You to, know what I mean? So like, you know, they can but, fuck you over just like anybody else can. But to your mm-hmm. point, is like imagine scenarios where. Uh, like your parents may disrespect the person that you're seeing right like Mm -hmm. you've been seeing for years and it's like i'm supposed to pick like i understand where you're Mm -hmm. coming from Mm because you're like i've never really experienced that before Mm -hmm. but it's like i'm supposed to pick my parents over this person who i literally see Mm -hmm. my life starting with Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because that's kind of what it is like you meet someone in this life man or woman and you're literally going to start a life with them, mm-hmm. right? Like a second life. And I'm supposed to pick my parents over them. Like they're going to disrespect them. Like who am I supposed to start this next life with, right? right. So it's a it's a So weird... in a situation like that, yeah. where this you've decided that this is the person that, that is your partner for life. Yeah. And they... Your your parents were great with them at first. And then suddenly it's there different. was there was an issue. And yeah. they're like, they're moving different ways now. How do you deal with that? I think, I think honestly, if if your parents like truthfully, at the end of the day, I feel like your parents are supposed to want happiness for you, mm-hmm. right? That's but like, it, because it's, it's, it's sorry, go ahead. No, that's like a dream yeah. scenario, mm-hmm. right? So, if you know in your heart the ex person makes you happy, mm-hmm. like the happiest you'll ever be, and your parents, for whatever reason, aren't in line with that. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't sway your opinion on this girl or guy. I feel like you just have to keep you. You have to stay in it. Like do mm-hmm. what makes you happy, right? Because think about how many people in this life lose out on things mm-hmm. that could potentially make them happy because of outside circumstances. Because somebody, mm-hmm. somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just, I just, I just wouldn't want to be in that position. Because from parents' perspective, it's, it's like I feel like it's one thing to like someone for. The person that they are yeah but it's it's something else when you like them for the person that, that, they're, that with. they're with yeah, you know with. i like i like yeah. you for that person yeah, yeah exactly and unfortunately it's like look parents parents at the end of the day think that they know best mm-hmm. i think that they know best based on the knowledge that they only have and the mm-hmm. problem is they're not they, in those conversations yeah, they're they, not in any of those conversations yeah. and there a lot of us are either first generation or like second generation mm-hmm. And our parents don't didn't have the luxury of like seeing things from our perspective growing up here. Like, mm-hmm. have, you ever, have you ever had that disconnect where living here, sometimes your parents or family members literally make you feel like an outsider mm-hmm. based on how they grew up? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, we live in two totally different scenarios. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, quite frankly, I, I imagine like back in the day, you know, a black dude dating a white white woman is like something that would like. Mm-hmm. Just never fucking right, happen, right. right? But it's like now it's a little bit more normalized mm-hmm. or interracial dating. So those are all things that change with time. But you know, some parents still may look down upon. But it is what it is. If yeah. that person makes you happy, it makes you happy. So 
That's it. So what was your request that you had? Oh, okay. Oh. As as an audience um, person, yeah. I request for Rhonda and Jamie to be a guest on the show. Yeah. We've, we've talked if, about this. If yeah. that's some, like, I'm not, I'm so sorry no, yeah. if I'm putting you on the spot. No, it's not. It's not. But sp- it's really something that I want. Did you yeah. hear what we were saying we're going to bring on, on the live show? I, yes, but I'm not, but what I'm saying is to have them on the show yeah. first before the live show. That's what I think. I think we should do that. Like maybe, maybe not at the same time. Maybe do one at a time. Hmm. But like, I think they need to be on the show first before, before the, the show. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I feel like that's something that um, everyone's curious about. Yeah. Or like at least I know I've been curious about yeah. it. Like in my head, I'm like, this is a relationship podcast. Hmm. You both have been in relationships in and out throughout the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this seems to be. The, the relationship where you're happiest. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to know if you want... Because you guys mix them with your work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, you you take pictures of them, you, mm. you you take videos of them, and you, you put in the effort for that part of your work. And yeah. this is another part. So I just wanted to see it okay. integrated. I mean, yeah, we can make it happen. We can make it happen. It'll be funny, but we can make it happen. It'll be interesting. Why are you laughing? You looked at me. <laughs> why, why, why are you laughing? I'm, I like I'm to laugh. so sorry if this no. is like we can odd. make it happen, hundred percent. But I, that that's that's my request. Okay. Please and thank you. All right. And I think that's well, a lot of people's requests yeah. too. I think it is. We'll just put that in the request box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's his way of saying no. Maybe, maybe, or as you put it, what did you say? Sounds good. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. good. <laughs> sounds, sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I'll let you know that, that sounds that's, really that's, good. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really Get them on good. the podcast. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, cool. Well, I think that's a good way to wrap the podcast. Mm. Yeah. Honestly, thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. A year later. This was was good. Are we at 243, 240? After cutting, probably 230 something after. Two hours and 30 minutes of talking some shit. How do you feel? I felt very... I was shaking for, I would say, like the first 20 minutes. Yeah. And And then you... But then... You guys have a... Like I said, it's it's a friendship dynamic. Mm. And it's... um. It's nerve wracking just because of the the, the of gravity stuff, of what yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. But um, you just feel right into it, and that, that's that's just how it is. Did you how, forget about the cameras for a little bit. Sorry. Did you forget about the cameras for I'm a little bit? I'm very conscious of them actually. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, I've been watching everything yeah. just because I've always wanted to know what this room looks yeah. like. Mm. Just, yeah, like the setup yeah. and everything, because it's different seeing it from like mm. when yeah. it's finished. Yeah. But then seeing it like like this yeah. in its raw form, it's yeah. like it's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for well, your time. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sure. being a loyal listener yeah. of WNTT Podcast. You'll never have to thank me for that. No, it's, it's actually really dope. Yeah. Like there's, especially in this day and age, being consistent and committed to something is so difficult. Yeah. Like to truthfully be like, I listen to 60 episodes of these guys talk. That's it's pretty yeah. sick. Yeah. You know I mean? feel like you're putting too much on it. Because it's mean? like, if you are a fan of something, it takes it takes time to develop certain things, right? You know, and and time, especially with what you guys do, yeah, it's it's precious and mm. it's 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 money. Yeah. So the for for whatever like the two hours forty four minutes that we're doing here could have been two hours forty four minutes doing a shoot, right? Yeah. Right, and I think a lot of people don't take that into consideration. Mm. So for the fact that you guys are taking time out of your day to yeah. do this, it should be something that people should be grateful for because mm. you don't have to do this. Yeah. You know, but you do it anyway. It's funny. Sometimes I think about the fact that we do, we do video as well. You mm-hmm. know, like a lot of podcasts don't do video. Mm-hmm. We don't have to do that, but we do it. Mm-hmm. I do it because I like it. Mm-hmm. Like it's a fun thing to do. Um, I think it adds another dynamic, but you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I appreciate that. So yeah. I'm very grateful. Speaking yeah. <laughs> on behalf of, of your, Thanks. of your fan base, so to speak. I'm very grateful. So thank you. Dope. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I am going to Miami in a couple of days, so fuck the snow again, <laughs> <laughs> fuck the cold again. I just seem to be in and out of town, which is which is great, and I'm f- very fortunate to be able to do that. Um, so, yeah, I'll let you guys know in Miami is when I get back next week. Other than that, thank you guys again for stopping by another episode. We talk. I'm Mr. K. Away alongside Top Boy. And it's me, Top Podcast. Hello. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk.